Call to order the meeting of the Green Bay Common Council for May 4th, 2021. Clerk. Thank you, all 12 are present and voting. All right, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for an invocation offered by Alderman John Vanderleest. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody can be seated. And I'll, I'll say a prayer here. Blessing on each employee. We ask your safety and protection on each family. Lord, in these troubled times, we need your direction and comfort to heal the brokenhearted. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on the minutes. Motion. Move to approve. Thank you. Alder Dorf makes a motion to approve the minutes. That was seconded by Alder. Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Uh, approval of the agenda. I'd like to make an amendment to the agenda. Yes, Alderdorf. Um, I would like to suggest that we move up items U and T in that order, which means committee of the whole would come prior to resolutions and that we would move that up immediately after item K, because I think there are many members of the public that want to speak on, on these things. And I think it would be best if we could have that earlier in the meeting. Okay, thank you all. Is there a second? Second. Right Seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been amended. I move motion. the amended agenda. Second. Alder Dorf makes a motion to approve the agenda as amended. That was seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been approved as amended. Unfortunately, starting out um, my mayor's report tonight on, uh, on a somber note, uh, of course, wanted to recognize the loss of life out at the Radisson this weekend, uh, Duck Creek Restaurant. Um, sadly, as, as you all know, um, two individuals were shot and killed. A third was injured, and uh, the suspect was also killed. And, um, of course, we extend thoughts and, and prayers and, and all of our condolences to those victims. Um, also want to acknowledge of our Green Bay Police Department to this tragedy. Uh, of course, it was in Ashwaubenon on the Oneida Reservation. Um, but as is the case with, with all kinds of these emergencies, there was a mutual aid response and, and our Green Bay police officers responded and uh, of course did so very well uh, and, and responded to keep uh, bystanders safe in that, in that situation. Um, so again, thinking of, um, of those victims, their families and friends, and of course, coworkers also at the Duck Creek Restaurant, um, and thinking of our, our partners, the leaders and members of the United Nation. Um, so with that, I would like to you know, take a moment of silence um, to recognize those who have been uh, impacted. Thank you. Um, a few other items that I wanted to touch on under the mayor's report here. Um, I think many folks have probably noticed that we don't have a face covering requirement on the agenda this evening. Uh, it's scheduled to expire at the end of today. And uh, you know, just kind of reading this discussion that we had um, when the, the requirement was put in place, it was pretty clear that council wanted to give our community some time to get vaccinated. Uh, as you all know, um, we do have universal eligibility for vaccinations for people 16 and up here uh, and really across the country. And, and that vaccine rollout has been really robust. Um, we're lucky to have seen case counts, hospitalizations and death rates also declining. 
Um, so I did not choose to place that item on the agenda. Um, we did not have, have alders, of course, take that step to put it on the agenda either. So that community-wide or city-wide uh, mask requirement uh, is falling away at the end of today. However, I would you know, encourage people to continue listening, especially to our Brown County Public Health Department, which, is, which continues to encourage mask wearing where appropriate in indoor settings and crowded settings. Um, and of course, physical distancing and, and washing of the hands. Um, and I will also be requiring uh, mask wearing for the foreseeable future in city facilities. Uh, so that will not be changing in spite of the fact that, um, that we will not have a city ordinance in place. Um, I was also asked to bring forward a plan um, to bring meetings back to an in-person setting here at, uh, at today's meeting. So I did want to let you all know that it's, it's my intention to um, have a council meeting for the first time in a, in a hybrid format for the first meeting in June, um, and to also have all of our council or our, our committees, commissions, authorities uh, also meeting in that format. Uh, but in order to accommodate that, um, we're going to need to have the council chambers occupied for all of those meetings um, because of the technological capabilities, but also the larger space. Uh, so I'm, I'm not moving forward. I'm not suggesting that we move forward to that hybrid format for our next meeting, because I do think we need to give our committees time to make sure that there's not overlap. Um, there's not a ton of that uh, as it stands, but there are a handful of committees that conflict and so I wanna offer um, chairs and staff the opportunity to coordinate that. Um, so that, that is my plan. If that is not you know, satisfactory, obviously for, for council, um, you have the opportunity to, to put in a communication and, and alter things that way. Um, but that's what I'm recommending moving forward. Uh, also, you know, we do have uh, a, the election report to discuss tonight, uh, sort of an associated resolution. Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion over the course of a number of meetings. Um, and so, you know, don't want to belabor the point, but would just, you know, point counsel to the fact that you all have empowered Attorney Chavez to, to draft a report. Um, she has done that, and she has reached the conclusion that, uh, you know, we conducted this election in a free, fair, and legal way. Uh, so we'll just ask council to, to recognize that expertise and to move forward accordingly. Um, finally, we have, uh, I think this is the, the most uh, appreciations I've ever seen in one day. We have teacher appreciation day today. There is firefighter appreciation day today. Um, it is clerks week across the United States and Canada and God knows where else. And it is uh, Star Wars day, May the 4th. Um, so want to recognize all the teachers in our community, my wife, most importantly, but also uh, I think we have at least three former educators on our meeting tonight, probably more. Uh, so I want to recognize Alder Dorf, Alder Gerlach, and Alder Scannell for their years uh, as educators. And of course, our firefighters. Um, the Green Bay Fire Department is, uh, is the finest in the state, uh, finest in the country, finest in the world. I would suggest. Um, so, you know, want to appreciate all of their service to the city of Green Bay and, and our citizens. Uh, as I said, it's also Clerks Week. So want to recognize Clerk Jeffries, uh, Clerk Fugi, Jenny and Dawn, uh, and everyone who, uh, who helps out in the clerk's office and supports that, that vital work. Um, I'm not the best person to celebrate Star Wars Day, uh, but to those who, who celebrate, uh, may the fourth be with you. Um, so with that, we'll move along to announcements. Any announcements from our council? Mayor? Yes, Alder Johnson, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to actually, uh, earlier today, the mayor, um, along with several representatives um, from different districts throughout our state, uh, and, and, and a couple of other folks um, joined in a press conference this morning uh, talking about, as well as a business roundtable uh, discussion, talking about the state budget. And so I just, I want to take the opportunity to recognize that we are going through that process right now. And we've, you know, very lightly talked about some things that could potentially intersect with city, but I would encourage everyone on city council to really contemplate 
items within the state budget that might allow us to be more effective as a city government and where appropriate i encourage you to to do some outreach with our elected state representatives both with the assembly um, as, as well as uh, the senate and of course the governor's office applies there as well but uh, I, I think it's really important to recognize some things that the governor's proposed some things that the legislature might be contemplating and, and perhaps there are things that um neither one of them are considering right now, but we feel could be important additions to that document. Uh, that's gonna affect us for the next two years. And I think we have a lot of needs at the local level that can be directly impacted by that. So highly encourage us to give that some thought. Well said, thanks Alder. Alder Brunette. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm gonna take the opportunity because we have 69 participants in the Zoom meeting, which is great. Uh, for anyone out there that can lifeguard or knows somebody who can be a lifeguard, your Green Bay Parks Department is in need of your service to make sure all of our pools are open. So please spread the word. Parks Department has done an outstanding job, but we certainly need to keep those. We, got, we need to open those pools this year for our, our community. So please pass the word. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for noting that, Alder. Mr. Mayor. Alder Lefebvre, go ahead. And I also, uh, also with Jesse, uh, I believe uh, Bay Beach Amusement Park I think they still need um, for the when they open fully. Yep, absolutely. Good point. Other announcements? Seeing none, we'll move along to appointments. Motion to approve. We have okay. a motion to approve the new appointments. Is it Alder? I believe that's yes, that's what we have. Yep. Okay. And that was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens, I believe. Any discussion there? I'd like to abstain from the police and fire appointment. I think it only appropriate that I abstain from that one. Okay, thank you, Alder, that will be noted. Any other discussion? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Close nay. The ayes have it, and those appointments are confirmed onto reappointments. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any discussion Mr. there? Mr. Alder Mayor? Dorf. Yes. Yes, I would like to definitely recommend um, Sydney Brenner and also uh, Daddy um, Youngs and Elizabeth Hudick. They'll, they'll be excellent people. I know them, and uh, I think they'll be very well placed great appreciate that any further discussion all in favor will signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 you guys have it and those reappointments are confirmed on to our public hearings is there anyone here who would like to speak to either of these items anyone here who would like to speak to these items is there anyone here who would like to speak to these items? Seeing that no one has appeared to speak, clerk, please let the record reflect that was the case. On to ordinances, second reading for adoption. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up these ordinances with one roll call vote. That was seconded by Alder Dorf. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Alder Scannell makes that motion to adopt, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any discussion here? And we will use the board. May I just give me, um, if you would be so kind, to give me one second since we are working in a new system. Yep, no problem. Okay. And Alders, you have vote in front of you. All right. Hmm. 
And those ordinances are adopted 12-0. Yes, thank you. The screen All is right. a bit small, so. No problem. Uh, now we are on to, because of the amended agenda, on to Committee of the Whole. Uh, just one item here, consideration with possible action on allegations pertaining to the 2020 election, including discussion about recent media reports and the March 10, 2021 Wisconsin Assembly Committee on Campaigns and Elections meeting. I will move that we go into closed session. Thank you. Motion has been made to move into closed sec session. That was made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Alder Weary? Thank you. I'm just wondering the reasoning for going into closed session right away. I thought it would streamline things. Um, I just thought we would be able to talk about this and then come back out in open session and have a more robust conversation. I, well, I guess I don't see the need to go into closed sessions. It's all pretty much out in the open, so let's just Let's keep it there. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett. Yeah, I'm again. I mean, all due respect to Alder Dorf, I'm against going in closed session. I think it, as much as this can be discussed in the open, the best. So I'll be against going into closed session. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Uh, I just would like like to ask Attorney Chavez um, what what the risks are. What you know the the legal risks. I. Help me understand why it would be okay not to go into closed session on this, because I'm not married to the idea of going into closed session. I just want to make sure that the city is protected. So, Attorney Chavez? Closed session is listed on the agenda so that if you guys are, um, are interested in discussing um, potential actions which could be taken in this, in this matter related to our election that you guys have that availability but as far as the discussion as, as the report goes there is no issue with that um everything pertaining to the report is open to the public so really unless you guys need to go into just to close session to talk about the potential for litigation or potential for action that legal action then this can all happen in op an open session so if i withdraw my motion at some point in the future of this discussion could we then choose to go into closed session if we felt we needed to yes you are always able to go into closed session when the need arises okay then i would like to withdraw my motion to go into closed session thank you alder i would uh entertain a motion to open the floor unless alders would like to make comments motion open the floor okay alder story makes a motion to open the floor that was seconded by alder scannell all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed nay the ayes have it, the floor is open. And to those citizens who are attending, um, Clerk Jeffries uh, and potentially Deputy Clerk Fugi will, will coordinate this some, um, but just remember to state your name and address before speaking. And customarily we have three minutes for our public members to speak. Thank you. Those wishing to speak, if you could um, raise your hand in Zoom or just wave. All right, um, we will have Luann Crowder speak first. If you could unmute yourself and state your name and address, please. My name is Luann Crowder and I live at 818 South Roosevelt Street. I believe that elections matter to a vibrant democracy. Because of that, I volunteered to help citizens register to vote. I went to libraries, schools, the Boys and Girls Club, a nursing home, and even sat outdoors at the Green Bay Voting Mural. My husband, Jim Wall, and I were poll workers for the August and November 2020 elections and worked at Central Count and City Hall for the April 2021 election. We received excellent training and were honored to serve. The high-speed ballot envelope opener purchased through grant funds was a godsend. Because of it, we were able to complete our task more quickly and without damage to any of the ballots we handled. I was shaken by the accusations leveled at the city of Green Bay for alleged violation of Wisconsin's election laws. Saying something does not make it true, but honoring such fanciful claims by giving them the full weight of your collective attention can seem to lend them a legitimacy that they do not deserve. 
of wrongdoing can cause people to become skeptical of the democratic traditions on which our country depends. I spoke to you on March 16th on this same topic. Some of you mentioned hesitation to accept the fact that there was no evidence of wrongdoing without a thorough investigation. Since then, I have read in full both the 19-page document detailing the investigation undertaken by Attorney Chavez and the two-page resolution you are being asked to approve tonight. You are all honorable, intelligent, and respected members of our city council, trusted by those who elected you. When you vote unanimously tonight to accept this report and pass this resolution, you will be affirming to your constituents what you know beyond a doubt to be true. This is your opportunity to draw the line between truth and falsehood and vote to affirm the integrity of Green Bay's election and the workers, the poll workers and the city hall staff who worked so diligently to make August, November, and April's elections, both at the polls and at Central Count, so successful in spite of the pandemic's challenges. These were properly and competently conducted elections. I know because I was there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we have Terry Lee. If you could unmute yourself, please. Yeah, Terry Lee, uh, 1105 LeCount Road, Green Bay here, over by NWTC. Um, just a little bit of a personal story here. Uh, I'm, uh, well, first of all, I'm speaking in favor of your support for the resolution here supporting the uh, 2020 election. Um, kind of a personal story here is that, uh, you know, I've, I never voted absentee before last year. Um, I did it for the spring and fall election. In the spring, my partner Jennifer and I didn't get our absentee ballots until the day of the election. Um, we both had put our requests in online weeks before, only days apart. Um, and we decided to vote absentee because at the start of the pandemic, we freed our lives and cast a vote in person. Um, you know, as time ticked away, the spring election, our absentee ballots hadn't come yet. We feared that both of us wouldn't be able to cast a ballot because we both work opposite schedules and we were planning on getting those absentee ballots. So it was going to be hard to be able to do that. However, we received them on election day when the mail came. We were very excited. We were able to fill them off, fill them out and uh, drop them off at the city hall drop box. I was right outside city hall. So we're very thankful for the opportunity, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, in the great state of Wisconsin to uh, allow no excuse absentee ballot voting. But right now, I am upset with the actions of a handful of council members, uh, partic particularly my own older person, Jesse Burnett, who's not stood up against this smear campaign and misinformation against our general election in November. City staff, hundreds of election workers and others who helped administer the election in 2020 demonstrated integrity and did their job as required under law. The lies, the smear campaign, and the misinformation directed at the city is shameful, and we need to stand up for everyone who helped out. I encourage anyone to come forward with evidence of any vote changing, illegal administration of this election, because at this point, um, there's only been elect, uh, integrity shown, demonstrated and documented by city officials, including the city attorney uh, Chavez, in running the election and the legal use of grant money uh, and a private consultant to be able to help um, with including additional PPE and election protections for voters, uh, being able to purchase additional drop boxes. Uh, the aspersions of this smear campaign against the great city of Green Bay and all those who stepped up during this pandemic to ensure a safe, secure, and fair election is being dragged through the mud right now. We need everyone to stand up to this nonsense and I ask everyone casting doubt about the administration of this election or counting of votes or anything like that that they uh, uh, think happened to put up or shut up. Because as of this point right now, there has been no evidence of wrongdoing at all presented. Um, please support the 2020 election resolution here. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Natalie Hoffman. 
Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Nellie Hoffman. Uh, my address is 2315 Eastman Avenue in Green Bay, uh, zip code 54302. And uh, thanks so much for uh, allowing me to speak here tonight. Um, I'm here to speak about my uh, own voting experience in Green Bay in regards to uh, the resolution that's on the agenda tonight. So uh, the first time that I voted was in the presidential election of 2016 when I was a freshman at UW Green Bay. And as a first time voter, it was super overwhelming to having to register in person because I didn't know how to do it online, make sure I had all my proper forms of ID at the ready and having to wait in line and like watch time tick down and worry whether or not I'd be late to class that day, like all a part of the voting process, but it was just overall really stressful. However, this time around with the extension of resources to make absentee voting the norm uh, due to the pandemic, uh, this past year's voting experience was so much simpler than the one that I just told you about from 2016, even though like um, this was my first time uh, voting absentee as well. Um, I was actually working as a regional organizer during the 2020 election season, so I did go into this process with a lot more knowledge than I did the previous election, but the resources provided by the city of Green Bay proved incredibly valuable, not only to myself, but to many other Green Bay voters. The work that um, I was a part of allowed me to converse and connect with a lot of student voters at UW Green Bay, as well as voters from the broader Green Bay community. And I can personally attest to the overwhelming amount of praise that these folks had for the ease and convenience of their voting experiences this past year. The increased early voting hours, the uh, polling locations and ballot boxes across town were a huge benefit to Green Bay voters, myself included. And um, as you know, we saw 84% of registered voters return their ballots for the their ballots for this election, which is an incredible turnout. Um, our city's election process was an unprecedented democratic success, and as a voter and a citizen of Green Bay, I am incredibly offended that legislators from both inside and outside this community are spending their time pointing fingers around a conspiracy that is rooted in biased, far right wing ideology instead of focusing on more important issues such as providing actual help and relief to their own constituents during the midst of a global pandemic especially considering this is now six months post-election like th this just needs to stop this has been drawn excuse me drawn out for way too long and this just needs to stop i would personally like to thank uh mayor genrick uh clerk jeffries and all of our city staff clerks and volunteers for their dedication to the expense to the expansion of the resources during the election and to our democracy and i am asking that the city passes this resolution on the agenda and defends our election thank you very much Thank you. Next, we have Adam. If you could unmute yourself, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam Gaines. I reside at 638 South Monroe Avenue here in Green Bay. Uh, I'm an associate professor of music at UW and the president of UWGB United, which is our local chapter of the American Federation of Teachers. I'm here tonight to reiterate my support for free and fair elections held in Green Bay last November. A few weeks ago, we crafted an open letter to the Wisconsin legislature that read in part, uh, we are proud of the mayor of the city of Green Bay, the over 700 poll workers, the National Guard and city staff are running a, a robust and transparent election in November that resulted in a historic 84% turnout. We fully support Mayor Eric Genrich's uh, leadership and, and look forward to future elections running as smoothly as the one held in November. Since that letter was published, uh, it's been signed by over 230 supporters. Uh, as we've all seen from the city attorney's report, uh, these were fair elections that were run transparently and efficiently. Voter access via drop boxes and absentee ballots was expanded, making it easier and safer for citizens to vote. Anyone with internet access could view the ballot counting at the KI Center and even freely walk into the center to view the process with their own eyes if they wished. I personally voted at the Bay Beach Wildlife Center and found the process very clear and very upright. There were obviously many volunteers and poll watchers uh, in attendance, and despite the obvious complexity of having so many wards in the same place, I felt very safe and I felt free to exercise my voting rights without any kind of undue burden or outside pressure or influence. I was frankly amazed at how clean the whole operation was in the midst of this global pandemic. So votes in support of the city attorney's re report and in support of both the November 2020 election and the mayor's office's handling of it. Uh, please vote in favor of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
If there is anyone else who would like to speak on this item, if you could unmute yourself at this time. This is Sandy Duckett at 2552 Wilder Court. Thank you, Sandy, if you'd like to speak. Yes, um, my name again is Sandy Duckett and I live at 2552 Wilder Court. I worked the 2020 election, both the primary and the general election at the Sears building. I can tell you there were many problems um, at the Sears building. First of all, for the primary election, there was half the power that was in the building. So when we came to set up the night, be, um, the day before, we had to move tables all over the place. We also sent home at least six National Guard people who were there to help with the election. And on during the primary election, I had two, um, I had to actually tell the, the, um, the, the staff who were working the polls not to be talking about politics because two of them were already working for the Democratic Party. There are many problems with this election. First and foremost, how can the city receive grant money that was, first of all, provided $10,000 for them to apply for a grant? I had worked in higher education and headed up a, a fun, um, fundraising efforts for uh, a technical college in the area, and we raised a lot of money. There has never been a time that the funder provided $10,000 for any municipality, for any organization to apply for their funding. We received over $1.6 million for this election, and we should have an audit of where those dollars were spent. It was appalling to me that I had to actually tell people in our ward to stop talking about politics. So to say that this was exemplary, that there was no uh, frustration, that this is a far right group, we all want fair elections. We don't want outsiders to come into our elections and run, run them for us. That's what we have staff, staff for. That's what the city clerk was in, um, supposed to do. And we didn't have, and the city clerk was kept out of this process against all state statute. I hope the, the committee does not support this this report by the uh, the attor city attorney. And there are several, several statutes within that report that were completely ignored. Thank you for allowing me to comment. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, if you could unmute yourself and state your name and address, please. We have Mary, if you could unmute yourself at this time. Am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, hi, my, hi, my name is Mary Brode at 2709 Nicolay Drive in Green Bay. And I would not wish that the council approve this resolution. Um, I think it is unprecedented that a third party come in and run the city's election. Moreover, that third party was a Mark Zuckerberg organization, far from a nonpartisan organization. Moreover, as Sandy Duckett just alluded to, election laws were broken. Nobody is accusing individual poll workers of breaking the law here at a 40,000 foot view with bringing in a third party who is far from nonpartisan to run your elections. This needs to be investigated mm -hmm. from top to bottom this needs to never happen again and I'm shocked that no one wants to take the steps necessary to make sure this never happens again the report generated by the city may well be all in good but there's people that were part of the problem who wrote that report if in fact 
there was motivation to swing this election to one party. It wasn't to the Republican Party. And it would have been essential to get adherence upon the city clerk, who in the end has a huge issue with how she was pushed aside from doing her job. I would also support a full outside human resources investigation, you would think a council that is charged with being nonpartisan would proceed to fix something that clearly never should have happened in the first place. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. And your honor yes sorry alder galvin yeah I, I have a question for miss broad go ahead um if she's still there i'm here she, okay ma'am you you said that um the people we hired were were um partisan um do you feel then that anybody the city it would have been okay if the people we had hired to help out had been nonpartisan? To answer your question, I did not watch the city council meeting wherein this all transpired. So I honestly don't know what your thought process was up front. <clears throat> it's come out after the fact, the association with Mark Zuckerberg. I don't know if you as a council were aware of those ties. So I give you the benefit of the doubt as to how all of this came to pass. I'm suggesting it needs to be fixed. It needs to never happen again. Right, in fact, I wasn't referring to Zuckerberg. You, you made mention of people that we hired that, that, uh, to assist us, that, that they, they were partisan. And, and I'm just asking them. It's, no, the Zuckerberg organization founded or funded. I'm sorry. Okay. He provided the funding. He's not a nonpartisan actor. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. May I ask a question, please? Alder Gerlach, go ahead. Um, I'm disturbed that uh, um, Ms. Broad has said and I quote, election laws were broken. Um, I think it's important when you say something like that in public that you tell us exactly what election laws you are alleging were broken. They were allegedly broken. I stand corrected. I will let the lawsuit filed on behalf of, or by the uh, Green Bay citizens who filed it play out the alleged breaking of election laws. I would think that would raise all sorts of red flags that you would want to get to the bottom of that in a full and transparent manner. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? Um, Renee has. I would like to speak. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Renee Gash. I do live in Brown County, but I would prefer not to give my address for safety reasons. Um, I'm the chair of the Democratic Party of Brown County, and I spoke at your the first city council meeting um, when this resolution was discussed. I spoke about my experience accompanying my family to early vote at Green Bay City which was well organized and safe and smooth um, and my experience as a poll observer at the atonement lutheran church polling location in green bay um, which was again was efficient safe um, no no issues at all so i'd just like to reiterate my gratitude to all the poll workers and election workers who ran a smooth election in the fall as well as the two elections we just had in the spring um, and i urge you to vote yes on tonight's to stand up for truth and honesty and decency in our community. Um, and I regret to share that two days after I spoke at that 
May, uh, March 16th city council discussion when this resolution was first brought up. The local Democratic Party received a threatening phone call on our office phone number, told us we would pay for stealing the election and we better watch our children. And encouraging conspiracy theories has consequences in our local community, dangerous consequences. And you are city council members, you are elected to serve and protect your constituents. And like all of you on the city council, I volunteer in our democracy because I care about my community. I'm proud to live in a country where we have the right to vote for our leaders. And although I disagree with Republicans on many things, they are still my neighbors and fellow Americans. And in a democracy, we settle things at the ballot box. If we lose, we pack up our yard signs, we lick our wounds, and we begin building for the next election. We don't threaten violence against each other. We don't endorse sedition. We don't spread lies and conspiracies that put our neighbors at risk. So I would like to, um, in closing, thank the Green Bay Police Department and the prosecutors for responding quickly to our reports and arresting the caller and pressing charges. And I hope you will act tonight with the same integrity and commitment to your community members, regardless of their politics, and vote unanimously in support of this resolution, expressing full confidence in Green Bay's election. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, is this a time where I can speak? Sure, Hector, if you could state your name and address, please. Thank you. My name is Hector Rodriguez, Dr. Hector Rodriguez. I'm also a neighbor here in Brown County. And for the past five years, I have, six years almost, I have been helping the Latino community attain citizenship and actually train them or teach them what it is that they have to do to become citizens in, in, in our nation. Uh, I have helped hundreds of, of new citizens in Brown County and Green Bay particularly. Uh, and I have helped in the past two elections. And uh, um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the current uh, management of, of the city and the councilmen, uh, of course, of people. I remember five or six years ago when uh, the city council was in the news regularly for really silly things, and, and that concerned me. And I don't hear those things now, which means that we have a better run system as of today. Uh, in terms of the election, um, one of the things that I teach the new citizens is about being able to be smart, smart citizens, and actually understand what the issues are about, what we, why we are voting. I'm very happy to say that the last election was very smooth for Hispanics, and I do not know how the population has grown and participated in the past elections, but I know that we are growing and we want to participate. And I want the resolution to pass because it really helps all of us to be part of our, new, uh, our nation. Uh, I am also, like the previous speaker, uh, concerned about conspiracy theories because it only harms everybody, everywhere in the community. And uh, yes, I would like to observe their complaints to come with facts. This is what happened, these are the issues. Because if we don't do that, it just perpetuates this uh, uh, lack of trust on, on the democracy. Uh, I'm an immigrant myself, and I'm concerned that uh, we are going to start imitating other nations that do not have democracy. And that should be a concern for everybody. So please pass this resolution and, and even provide more support for people, new, new immigrants, to come and participate in the elections. The last elections were really uh, an example of good management. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Emity. If you could unmute yourself, please, and state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is and I live in 720 North Broadway. Thank you for giving me the moment to speak. I just wanted to share that um, my personal election experience, I'm a new transplant to Wisconsin. I've been here for a few years and I moved to a new home in this uh, district last summer. So voting in February and April were my first time voting at this new address. 
I knew that it was going to change my voter registration, but I didn't exactly know um, how or what to do. I went to the website and did what I knew to do, uh, making sure that I went to the right poll location, having documents with me. When I went to vote in February, I registered at the new address on site and um, had a pleasant experience. In April, on April 7th, during the pandemic, and with the closing of a lot of voting locations, I was in line, and I have time stamp. <laughs> so I have this detail. I was in line for four hours and 10 minutes, including having to go back home after being in line for three and a half hours when I got to the door, because apparently something was wrong with my registration. And since I wasn't prepared to re-register, I didn't have something with my name and my address on it, um, they turned me away. Now, in general, I appreciate this. This to me is just a sign of those who were manning the polls following the rules. We even called the uh, main election office to get to understand what I needed to do. I am grateful because I had to work and it was a school day, right? It's a Tuesday. Um, I work at NWTC, I had class and I was really trying to vote knowing I had class, planning, trying to debate whether I needed to cancel class or not when we have limited class schedules. And so that even in of itself can be a challenge as a working professional. Um, I got back and they allowed me to skip the line and come back and vote. And so that total process took four hours and 10 minutes. So I was grateful for the opportunity to uh, vote with the absentee ballot for the November elections. I requested it very early because I wanted to make sure that I got it. And I dropped it on locations that had been extended. And so I just wanna say going forward, I hope that you accept the resolution that I hope that we can, as a city, really think about some of the factors that affect people being able to vote and thinking about those who are working, those with limited access to polls. I actually walk to the polling location, even though I have a car, but those who don't have a car um, and who don't have the time. And so just these are things that I hope, as uh, someone said earlier, that the city turns their attention toward instead, uh, instead of these allegations that haven't come with many facts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Amy. If you could unmute yourself, please. Hi, my name is Amy Yankee, and I live at 1016 Howard Street. And I am calling in to vo vote my um, um, to uh, express my support to support the resolution saying um, that there was uh, no wrongdoing in the election. Um, some of the folks that have been pushing that there was somehow misdoings in the election are pushing something that's very dangerous to our democracy in general. So some of the findings from something called the Democracy Fund that did a systematic investigation of what goes wrong in our system and how do elected officials no longer represent their uh, constituents. And some of the things that they found is our reason for our incredible partisanship has to do with money in elections and whether or not people are voting. And some of those solutions to this is to help get more people voting. It's not a Republican or a Democratic issue. And when you make it an, a Republican or a Democratic issue, it makes it more partisan and it makes it more dangerous. And so things like Center for Civic Life um, that, are, uh, that had brought forward some of this nonprofit money their goal is literally just to get more people to vote, regardless of which party that they impact. And the more people you get voting, the more people become uh, accountable to their local uh, voting representatives, like citizens like us, and it helps the democracy stay stable. It helps the democracy stay healthy. So those are some of my reasons that I um, will would like the body to support the resolution to say there was no wrongdoing. The last part is in an interview of the former clerk on November 12th um, said, I am not aware of any type of voter fraud and she has not moved off of that statement. And so I don't know why we would even go through the amount of expense we have gone through when even the person that you 
that people keep pushing up has said, I am not aware of any type of voter fraud. Thank you very much. Thank you. If anyone else would like to speak on this item, if you could unmute yourself at this time. Once again, if anyone else would like to speak on this item, if you could unmute yourself at this time. It appears that there's no other members of the public wishing to speak on this item, Mayor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Rand Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Alder Dorf. Um, thank you. And for, first of all, I would like to thank the members of the public that came to speak tonight. I'm sure all of you spoke from your heart, whether I agreed with your position or not. Um, it takes the courage to come and, and speak in front of all of us. And I appreciate the time and the thoughtfulness that you put into the remarks that you made. Um, I certainly do support the resolution. I had a large part in helping write that resolution with Alder Lynn Gerlach and also with the support of Alder Kathy Lefebvre. So the three of us, um, and I, we're really not talking about the resolution right now, and I know most of the comments were, were regarding the resolution. So um, I just want to say thank you for that. We'll be talking more about that in a little while. Um, to go back to what we are talking about right now, I first would like to congratulate and thank Attorney Chavez for one of the most excellent, well-documented, uh, well-put-together reports I've ever read. I took this report. I highlighted areas of it. I lived this report. There are so many things in this report that I experienced firsthand as one of the two alders selected by council to serve on the ad hoc elections committee. I was there at Sears with uh, Alder Chris Weary to get Sears as one of our polling locations. And I was out there observing on the uh, August date where there were some power troubles. I wrote up a very specific and comprehensive report. I interviewed probably 30 people, asked them, how, what can we do better? What can we do better for November? And guess what? In November, it was a much better site. We solved the problems. We had the, so we were able to overcome the problems that would have been harder to overcome in November. Luckily, August, not a lot of people turned out. If you recall, we were in a pandemic, a, a pandemic. Our country was in a pandemic. Many people chose to send in their ballots absentee because they did not want to risk getting ill. So August, we didn't have a lot of attendance, and we were able to look at all of those polling places, and we were able to make changes. And a lot of this work was done through Elections Committee. I would like to sincerely thank our new clerk, Celestine Jeffries, um, our old clerks, and a, a dep deputy clerks, for the works that they did on the committee, and all the other people that this report that Attorney Chavez has written shows clearly to me that there is no evidence of any wrongdoing in anything that was done on any of the election days. And I will call upon this council later on to show its support for our election process, to show its support for our community and for our people, for our voters, for our poll workers, for our employees, when we would talk about that resolution. But this report is just another step in dispensing with all of these false allegations, insinuations, and innuendos about things that never even occurred. Thank you for listening. Mayor. Thank you, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. <clears throat> uh, yes, someone alluded to the grant uh, that there never was any accounting. Remember, I made the request that it be um, completely published. People should be able to go on our, I believe, the uh, Green Bay website, should be able to find it. And it was completely, everything was documented where the money went, because that's what I was concerned, that people are going to say, oh, we got this money now, and it was all hushed up, you know, 
another conspiracy thing. And I just wanted everybody to know that how the money was spent. And it's there for people to look. Elder. Any other comments? I have a few questions, Mayor, if I may. Elder Burnett, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Attorney Chavez, at the last city council meeting where we discussed this at length, I think it was early March, or mid-March, rather, you had indicated that you would forward this report to the Wisconsin Assembly campaign in elections. Have you done that? Attorney Chavez? Sorry, I got muted somehow. Um, yes, I, this was sent over. Well, uh, like when it was released to the council or within the last few days? Not that it matters, but. Um, it was sent shortly after it was released, I'd say within the next day or two. Um, did the, I don't know if it would be the chairperson or the committee as a whole or the legislature, did they acknowledge receipt of it? Did they give any follow-up questions or, or anything of that like? I have not received any follow-up questions. Um, if you are asked, and I understand, and, and again, part of the, this issue that we have is really toxic politics, unfortunately, has been entered into this from both sides, admittedly. Uh, but in the last, a couple, about a month ago, you were invited, and for good reason, you could not participate. If invited to testify in front of the Wisconsin Assembly campaigns on elections, would you still testify and would the mayor, mayor, if you could answer that question? I've already, uh, actually today I notified, uh, so I, re I received a request from um, Representative Branchon last week, I believe, for some dates of availability for the mayor. Um, he and I have not been able to connect to identify his availability. So instead what I did is I directly in contact with the mayor today and then responded to her notifying her of my availability she asked for specific days of the week um, so I notified her which days I would be available and that I would be um, attending in addition to the mayor okay thank you so you will and, and again I, I didn't like the, the cheap shot that the assembly took on the mayor's office and you because it was rather short notice and I don't like that sort of politics, so I'm glad that you would participate or will agree to participate. That was my main question. Okay, no other questions. Thank you. Any, any other At this holders? time, if no one else is speaking, I'd like to receive make a motion oh, to receive oh, and place on file. We're not done yet. Oh, oh, oh. okay. I just saw yeah. no one. No I, one's... Well, just... I would like to make a motion that we go into closed session. I want to make sure uh that we do not want to take any action on this or what kind of i would like to have a quick discussion on that just to make sure uh, uh that we uh, and that has to be discussed in closed session whatever, whatever action we might want to take or discuss what possible action we might want to take and decide to do it or not to do it so uh i make a motion that we go into closed session is there a I'll second, second that. motion has been made to go into closed session it was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Discussion on that motion? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alder Weary, was it? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, Attorney Chavez had mentioned that we could go into closed session for potential legal actions. Uh, I would ask the attorney, is there any potential legal action? Yes, as we discussed um, last time in closed session, we do have some recommendations for the council as far as legal action that could be taken. Um, it's still along that same nature, so if the council decides to move forward with any of those, that is something that should be discussed in closed session. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Other discussion, questions? All right, somebody want to read the language? Do we need to vote on it first or? No, I can read the language if, oh, okay. if you want. Um, the Common Council may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.851G Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral 
energy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. The Common Council will thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to Section 19.852 Wisconsin statutes to take action in closed session if appropriate and to consider the remainder of the agenda. All right, we will use the board. Alders, you may vote. That is 10 to two, move into closed session. So all those just hold your comments while Clerk Jeffries moves members of the public to the waiting room. We're waiting for everyone. It's a beautiful, um, going to be a beautiful sunset, and the sun is shining great right now. <laughs> At the end of the day, it always happens. <laughs> Take a picture for us. You what? Take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah, you should <laughs> save it because we're going to have clouds the rest of the week almost. Jeez. Got my first sunburn this weekend. <laughs> first one ever. Uh, no, <laughs> for the year. <laughs> Should have taken a picture of that, huh? 80 yeah. degrees. <laughs> All right, looks like. I think we lost some people. Seven. Jesse? Listen, Jesse? Chris. And Chris. Yeah. Vanessa? I am here. Do you want me in this meeting? Um, it's up to the council on what they want. Right. Do you think we're in next? I'll be right back, Your Honor. Okay, Mayor, we are ready to go back. Um, we'll I will entertain a motion. Did Alder Vanderlees have one? He did. Yes, motion to go into open session. Second. Motion made by Alder Vanderlees, seconded by Alder Stoyer to return to open session. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. habit. Oh, it. And we are back in open session. Entertain a motion. Hey, Mayor. Mayor could you hold, I'm so sorry. Could you hold on one second, please? Sure. Thank you. Just hold your comments for a bit. Okay, okay, great. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, Mayor, yes, we are good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Clerk. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just still had a few questions on the report. We went into a motion was made to go into closed session before I had a chance to ask these. So, um, Attorney Chavez, it, within the report, we talk about, um, in particular, I guess some, some questions that were made. Um, Michael Spitzer Rubenstein's um, advocating setup, and then uh, at the time, then Claire Teske had uh, disagreed with his recommendation, and then uh, there was a directive from the mayor's office to more or less override that. Could you, because it's at the heart of some of the accusations that have been made, could you clarify? What is the actual role of the clerk? I mean, in terms of what's within the clerk's scope of responsibility versus what can be overruled? Yes. So the clerk's responsibility is really, I mean, the, the clerk is in charge of the election and has supervision over the election. There's no dispute about that. But as far as the specific items pertaining to the election, there's nothing in the, in the statute that actually designates who can make specific decisions outside of things that are statutorily established, such as what the ballot supposed to look like, um, making the, the um, registration following that pertain to the actual policy. A lot of that is established in the law. But as far as things such as layout of the room or location of central account, those things aren't contemplated. Those are just things that have to be done to make an election work but really don't go to the heart of the election itself. They're the things that have to happen. So when there's these allegations that the city somehow violated state statute by making these decisions, um, it, it's just not true. There isn't statute that says the, that the clerk has to be the one to get to choose the central lo location instead. Um, the only reference to it really occurs in our ordinance, which states that the clerk posts the meeting notice, which would, would at that point um, indicate where the location is. It doesn't identify who actually chooses the location of central count. Uh, same thing with regard to, to, to a the layout of in-person absentee voting. The statutes are silent with regard to in-person absentee voting. The, sta the statutes are silent as far as what advice we can accept from whom as far as all these different issues go. So the mayor is within the statutory requirements. He's, he's within his authority to be able to override certain decisions. Correct? I think it's, it's really going to be a sliding scale. Like when you look at it, you have to look at it in the totality of the circumstances. When I'm looking at it and the only things I'm seeing are these handful of issues where there were some, some um, disagreements about how things should, should happen and the mayor's opinion won out. So don't rub of indicating that the, that the clerk didn't have supervision or it wasn't in charge. It's isolated incidents. Now it's not to say that the mayor could never uh, or can always make changes to how things work, but you'd have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, and this just doesn't rise to that. Okay, thank, thank you for clarifying that. Um, th later on in the report, uh, it was mentioned that uh, 1 a.m., Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein left Central Count voluntarily following a disagreement with then Deputy Clerk Waite. Are you able to divulge what the nature of that disagreement was? Yes, they had a disagreement. I didn't have this information at the time that I published the report, which is why that wasn't um, made available as part of the report. Um, what they disagreed about was what role he could, he could um, and I shouldn't say role, have, whether or not he was allowed to speak to people um, who were still part of the city, but not part of the poll workers. So um, for example, the communications team that was there at the um, essential count after things had wrapped up, he was speaking to, members who were part of that team and after some complaints it sounds like um deputy clerk 
wait instructed him not to talk to anybody and he was frustrated and chose to leave okay thank you for clarifying that um last page of the report it's mentioned um regarding judge greasebox ruling a case uh with respect to the attorney that had also testified in madison uh that the case was was taught uh, one of the reasons had indicated that at the time, more than 100 municipalities had received funding from CTCL. Uh, are you familiar with or are you aware of how much uh, funding was allocated to the five initial cities versus what might have been allocated to the other cities? Um, I don't have those numbers um, with me. I know that, of course, the, the five largest municipalities ended up with the, the largest amount allocated to them. There's no dispute about that. But even if just looking at from a, from a numbers um, by population, that was going to happen. Um, but I don't have that information. I know some of them were pretty, were pretty small, like maybe $10,000, and then there were, were ones like um, Milwaukee Madison. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I didn't necessarily expect you to have that information. Um, but I just know that that's at the heart of maybe some of the discussion that's, that's been occurring. So I'm just trying to clarify some of that. Um, the other cities that have accepted grants, are they receiving the same level of scrutiny or, or legal challenges as Green Bay? The only ones that I am aware of at this time are Madison, Milwaukee, Kenosha, and Racine, along with Green Bay. So the ones who were part of the original election challenge. Okay. Um, as of today, are there any open complaints against the city? Against the city itself, no. There are. There is a, a complaint in front of the WEC, um, which is the only one that I'm aware of at this time. Um, and that one is against the mayor, the current clerk, and the former clerk. Okay. Um, you know, one of the several, several speakers today, and as well as some of the emails that we've received, I think talk a lot about um, concern about the integrity of the poll workers, the volunteers, the staff, yet nowhere in your report um, did I see any, anything that, that talked about accusations leveled against those individuals. From your experience and from the way that you investigated this, have you experienced complaints directed specifically towards poll workers and staff um, other than what was, again, specifically identified in here? I have so not. In fact, everyone that I've spoken to has, has indicated they felt like everything was run um, very well and that they, they believed that the election was conducted properly. Okay, and, and that seems to be my hunch too, and I wanted to maybe just reinforce that because I, I think that um, sometimes we're talking about the wrong issue, and I do feel that um, that our poll workers and, and staff that work specifically for the elections have done a, a, a wonderful job, and I don't feel like they're necessarily the target of what's being discussed. Um, additionally, it was brought up uh, that former clerk Sandy Juno has said that there was no voter fraud. Um, and I personally haven't seen any accusations of voter fraud. I think the, the, the concerns or the complaints actually focus more around um, other things, but I'm not aware of any accusations related to voter fraud and that wasn't brought up in your report. Are there any accusations of voter fraud? Not to my knowledge. Um, instead, I, what I've been seeing in the allegations that I've, that I've been, um, because we've been monitoring them as well, the allegations are all that because some things weren't um, supposedly not followed the way that they should have been, as a result, the election itself was tainted, um, absent voter fraud. Like, I'm not really sure how that leap is being made, um, but that is, that is where things are going. Okay. And, and from my perspective, it seems like process, expediency of the election uh, has all been well received. Um, and, and really, I feel like the complaints may be a focused around objectivity. Would you, would you agree that there has not been complaints about process or expediency, or would you say that you've had information to the contrary? Um, what do you mean complaints? So I'm, I've been seeing not only the allegations against um, the city and the complaints that we've received, but also the, the statements that have been made in the media and by the public 
which do pertain to the processes itself. So some of the things we discussed a little bit earlier as far as, you know, the decisions that were made as part of it, moving central count to lay out of uh, um, the uh, in-person absentee, you know, all of that does pertain to the processes, but it's not, and, and those are being criticized. Um, so, so I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, when you mean complaints, do you mean complaints by people that I spoke to or complaints that are just like broad allegations out there? Sure, and specifically, obviously, I'm referring to the report, but have you received any complaints maybe about, hey, we had to wait long in line or ballots were illegally cast or um, somebody didn't show proper ID, things of that nature? I have not received any complaints. I can't speak to whether anybody else has, but I have not been made aware of any. Okay. Um, and then one last question. Um, it, as, as the city attorney, would you agree that part of your job responsibilities are to mitigate risk exposure for the city? Yes. Okay, and, and um, if an investigation uh, through this process, if during your investigation you found wrongdoing that would create a conflict with that responsibility, how would you handle that? I guess I'm confused by what you're saying. So are you asking like if hypothetically I found that um, one of our employees had, you know, Sure, let, let me clarify. It is absolutely a hypothetical question. I wanna be very clear about that. Um, but if you, through your report, if you found something that was wrongdoing and potentially put the city at risk, how would you handle that, that issue of wrongdoing as it relates to your report? That would have been brought to the council and then the council would ultimately decide what to do with that. So when I drafted the report, the whole point of that was to bring forward a factual basis um, for the council to determine whether or not anything, um, whether there was any any issues with what had been brought forward. I have not identified any. And so I have not treated this like a legal document at all. Um, I made it very clear to people that when I'm, what I'm doing, because this has been an effort for transparency, is just providing a factual basis. I have not been tackling this from a legal standpoint in the sense that we're trying to do risk mitigation. Um, in fact, that's why I've been very candid in everything that's happened. I told everybody at the outset before I started talking to them, tell me what happened, we're owning it. It doesn't matter if we messed up. It doesn't matter if we you know, um, did something different from how maybe we should have like we're going to own it and we're going to we're going to accept whatever may come like the council needs to know the public needs to know and the, the best thing we can do is just accept anything that we did any of the failures or shortcomings that we may have had and be open about it so okay. and i i mean and i appreciate I the I response really and for you because i wasn't tackling it from a legal standpoint because i never saw any issues coming up Okay, and I appreciate that response, and that's exactly what I hoped uh, your reply would be, but I wanted the public to understand um, the differentiation there in, in, in appreciation of obviously a lot of hard work that you did put into this report. Um, I think there will always be the question of objectivity, and I don't know that there's anything that we can say or do to rectify that, but so long as um, the public has the assurances that um, again, that, that it's a fully transparent report. That's exactly what I, I wanted to understand. So thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder thank Smyer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've, repeat, I've repeated before that I did work at Central Count, and I was there from 6.15 in the morning till 3.15 in the av afternoon. As far as what I observed, um, it, it was a little hectic at times. Um, there were a few times where Mr. Rivera Wagner was moving about the room with a raised voice and he kind of talking to folks loudly and I was, I saw when the DS450 machine was not working properly on a few occasions and it seemed like a few folks were gathered to try to uh, effort to get the manual votes out and, and such, they were working on that. Um, I was very focused on counting wards, two wards of votes. I just focused on that. I wanted to do a good job, and I feel that I did. 
Um, my opinion uh, is that Central Count was busy, folks were milling about, voices were raised at times, and I experienced, I experienced some moments of discomfort, but only because it was just so busy at times. And, you know, who do we talk to? Was it, was it Kim Wadey? Was it Jamie Fugue? Was it Diana Ellenbecker? I think at times it was a little, a little confusing as far as who, who we needed to go to. And I, I guess, you know, one of the questions I had uh, of Attorney Chavez was, or, or anybody that was there was that, okay, the clerk normally oversees the election. Now, Clerk Teske was not there. Uh, Kim Wadey was there. Jamie Few was there. Who was actually supposedly in charge at Central Count? Can somebody answer that? The chief inspector has control over um, the polling location. So, on site, it was at Central Count, it was Jamie Fugge until uh, Deputy Clerk Wade showed up later in the evening because um, Deputy Clerk was in charge of the overall election that day. Well, I just wanted people to be aware of that because I think there were aspersions that Mr. Rubenstein was, was in charge at times and I didn't see any improprieties in terms of people were talking about voter fraud and you know, changing things up. I personally did not see it. Like I said, it was hectic. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the report that you put out. Um, is it perfect? Well, you can't get everybody to testify like Alder Galvin said. If you start throwing some things out there, then you have to open it up for everybody. I think you, you did a, a very good job of putting some things forward. Um, you know, as far as, let's see, I had maybe one other question. Um, yeah, let's see, what do I got here? You know what, that might be it for now. I, actually, I did want to ask, uh, did the elections ad hoc committee control any aspect of the November election? Now, I, I said advisory, and I know, I kind of know the answer, but I just, for transparency, did they have any control at all in what happened at the election? I, I don't know that I would say anybody had control. I would say that directive was being given and those directives needed to be followed. Uh, you know, those essentially, because they were uh, voted on by council, those carried the weight of council, which is the governing body of the city and to which each one of the employees or, or the appointed officials, I should say, um, are, are responsive to. And so I, I would say that the decisions of the ad hoc committee did carry a lot of weight and were directives that should have been um, taken into account and implemented to the, to the extent they were able to be. Okay. And then finally, I, I, like I said, there have been a number of allegations that have come forward, you know, from folks and different politicians and different things. And like I said, a lot of this to me seems like allegations or nobody went to the DA, nobody came forward with actual improprieties, like what actually did happen. I didn't see any of that. I th you know, there might be some sour grapes there. You know, I, I think normally with elections, I've been through a few in my lifetime, I'm a little older. And normally when the vote comes in, you you move on. And you, like, like one of the citizens said, you, you lick your wounds and pack it up and wait for the next election. So uh, I think the report was done well. Um, like I said, I didn't experience anything at Central Count that I felt would warrant uh, anything with, you know, that should overturn the election in any way. So unless somebody else can raise some things up in the rest of this discussion, I feel pretty comfortable with with what I've just stated. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> Additional questions or comments? Alder Galvin and then Alder Brunette. Um, Attorney Chavez, uh, Mr. Sprister Rubenstein has been referred to as a political operative um, by um, many people, mostly the ones that are accusing him of wrongdoing uh, during the election. Um, when I looked that up, it said a, a operative of someone who works for something, political operative, uh, means that he works for a, a particular political party. Um, 
it, were you able to check and see if he was actually um, employed by a, any political party uh, at the time that he was uh, subcontracting with the city? I no, since he was working through the um, National Vote at Home Institute, and they are a nonprofit, that, that would have been their obligation to ensure that, that he was um, following their, their rules. And I did speak to both him and um, the, his, his supervisor who works for National Vote at Home. She's one of the main people there. And uh, she stated specifically that, you know, they, they had a vetting process to, to identify people with business skills um, to participate in their fellowship program. Okay. Um, are you aware of any state statute violations that would have occurred if anybody working at the election, um, poll work or anything, was also being employed or had been employed by any political parties currently or in the past? Would that have been any kind of a violation of state statute as far as you know? There are specific requirements for somebody to be qualified as a um, inspection elector. Amongst those are not anything related to um, prior history with politics. Okay. Um, I think it was page 16. Um, your report refers to a then clerk Juno, um, Brown County executive, uh, uh, executive's assistant, I think Chad Weininger, and then also a person, I don't have his name written here, who's identified as an attorney for Brown County. Um, do you, did your report state why those three people were, were at Central Count? The report refers to them in what capacity. So um, clerk, former Clerk Junio and Court Counsel Hemery signed in on behalf of, count, of Brown County and uh, Chad Weininger signed in at, on his own behalf. So with that, I would, I would say that they were representing Brown County or themselves as dictated by what they, rep what they represented when they signed in. Um, but all of them declined to speak to me, so I don't have any additional e details on that. Okay. Is that normal for the, the county of the count? And uh, from the sounds of it, just kind of look around and poke around and um, ask questions and things like that? I mean, there's nothing that prohibits it. Anybody can sign in on behalf of any organization. And so I, I, I couldn't tell you whether or not it's, it's atypical or not. Um, but for an attorney to show up in the official capacity, um, you know, I would, I would anticipate that in that instance, he was representing the clerk's, county clerk's office. But again, I, I don't know because nobody was, was um, willing to speak to me about it. Okay. And, and the fact that uh, Clerk Joe had in the past been the president of the Republican Party of Brown County, that, that wouldn't qualify her as a political operative, would it? I, I couldn't speak to that. I mean, it's... I couldn't speak to that. Okay. And, and then I guess as far as Mr. Weininger goes, the fact that he was a Republican uh, elected legislator for the state of Wisconsin for a number of years, that, that would have no bearing on that either? Um, you know, and the thing is that there's a, there is a difference between people who sign in as observers and people who are participating, and the statutes do anticipate that people from parties will be there, um, but, you, but generally you have to sign in on behalf of the party. So if they're signing in on behalf of, of a different entity, that's a completely separate situation. Um, but again, I wouldn't be able to speak to that. Okay. So in essence, anyone that's worked for a political party in the past, that really there's, there's nothing statutorily wrong with them if they did it in the past and then they come to work for the city of Green Bay or get involved with uh, the city of Green Bay's uh, election process. It, it, it is, you are not permitted to discriminate against people based on their political beliefs. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, uh, your information and for the effort you've put into this report. Alder Burnett. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, there are two main issues that I see in question. 
from articles that I've seen in the complaint before the WEC, two broad things. One would be uh, uh, former clerk Teske and how she felt during the course of the election, the fall election, and then also the role of Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein. So I just have a, a few questions on those specific items. Uh, the first, uh, I'll, I'll talk about Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein. Uh, Attorney Chavez, from what I understand, there are like three different roles that a person could have at, at Central Count. One would be an employee. Many of our employees worked very hard, and I'm very grateful for that. The other would be an observer, uh, but also possibly a consultant. And so of those three, an employee, uh, uh, observer, or a consultant, what would best define Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein? I, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, so there are three, I, I guess you could say there are three roles of people who are at Central Count. One would be our employees, many of whom were in different departments, but they worked our election. The other would be a consultant, uh, and the other would be observers. So of those three generally broad definitions, which would def best define Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein at Central Count? Okay, so this is why I was a little confused by your question. So there are, are three roles identified by the WEC, which are identified in statute, and those are observer, inspector, clerk. And so what we had at Central Count were, were um, tags identifying who people were based on their relationship to those positions. Um, so we had, a meet, but we also had a media one, we had an observer one, we had um, a city employee ones, and then of course we had the inspector ones. Um, and so I think what you're asking, so as far as whether or not he falls into the consultant, he absolutely fell into the consultant one. But what I think you're asking me is of those three statutorily established ones, which one did he fall into? The way the city was utilizing him, it fell into the um, employee one, but employee is still not something that's identified by, um, by state statute. Um, it doesn't, you know, there's, there's inspector, there's clerk, and then there's observer, or the, the real roles. Um, it doesn't anticipate employees in other roles potentially being there because those those are, you know, it looks at the fundamentals of what you need to do to carry out an election, not looking at these, you know, issues that come along, like who's going to coordinate lunch. The idea would be that you would have potentially an, an inspector coordinating lunch if you're going to do that but it's not something that's contemplated in that. So in that context, I would say that as far as the badges goes, I think that's why he was given the employee badge at the beginning of it. And then after they had the consultation with the WEC and it was discussed those three roles, he needed to fall into one of those three roles. They decided to just tell him he needed to be an observer because he clearly did not qualify as either a clerk or an inspector. Okay. So he was, provided a city employee name tag. That's correct? He, was, he received a tag that stated the word city employee on it. Um, he probably should have had a separate one that said consultant or something else, um, but that's what he was given. Okay, thank you. Um, while he was there, do you know Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein, when he was at Central Count, did he have any communication with election officials or consultants at central counts in the municipalities of Madison, Milwaukee, Racine, or Kenosha? Um, I don't know that. In my understanding and in my discussions with um, both him and staff was that he was focused on what was happening at City Hall, um, or I'm sorry, at Central Count here in Green Bay um, until he left. Okay, um, you know, so prior to being invited or allowed at the central count on election day, did he receive any training, be provided a memo or sign an agreement from or with the city as to what he would be allowed to do that day and what activities would be prohibited? There, there was no um, agreement that was signed with national. 
involved in privity with them per se. They were offering services to us um, in a uh, pro bono fashion, essentially. And so what was done instead was they created this um, worker log, I guess. I don't even know how it would be best described. But essentially it established everybody's anticipated roles at central count. So I would say that probably was what controlled as far as what his, his obligations were going to be at central what role he was going to fill. Did he, uh, so a lot of the city employees and the volunteer inspectors and clerks and whatever, whoever were at central count, many of them were trained by the city. Did Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein receive training from the city? I don't know that, but I don't think so. I, I, I shouldn't say, I don't, I can't confirm for sure, but I don't think so. Cause, um, just a follow up to that. So a lot of when you're involved in an election, you obviously have to understand and follow state law, uh, the statutes, and I would imagine federal law. And so a lot of the questions regarding Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein, things that I've seen, and I'm not validating things I've seen or heard, I'm just asking the question, would be that he may not have understood or been trained in election law for the state of Wisconsin. Uh, would that be a fair assessment? I couldn't speak to his training, but what I can say is the law department was involved in um, numerous discussions re regarding the election, especially in those last few days leading up to it. All right, fair enough. Thank you for that. And one last question regarding Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein. Regarding the secret hidden network, I think, or hidden secret network, whatever it's referred to, the, the, the Wi-Fi connection that was for sense, quote unquote sensitive machines, I did ask the question of, of Mr. Ronick from the IT department, and then he deferred to you, and that was a good decision, obviously. But that this hidden network or third network uh, that was the stream, the, the count, the live count, did, was there any um, documentation received or any questions of the Hyatt, or uh, I'm sorry, the KI Center as to any computers phones, tablets, whatever, that were connected to that, that Wi-Fi network? Um, what they, so after, when I spoke with the KI's AD um, contractor, what they indicated to me is that the network was open, so potentially anybody who, who was able to find that network could have accessed the internet through that access point, through that network point. And so they were going to see if there were still records um, available from the internet service provider itself. Um, but I never heard that, which tells me that they probably didn't find anything. So as of now, we do not know what, and again, I'm not creating scandal, it's just a question. We can't confirm 100% that Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein did or did not have access to that network. But we had access to it if he logged into that network while at Central Count. Correct, but as they told me, um, both our HR, uh, sorry, our IT director and the AV uh, from KI, that the, it, it's literally just a network. It's just how you access the internet. So it's not like it's providing anything special. It's not like you're getting anything, you know, unique or, or anything. It's literally just how you would access the internet. It would just mean that you would have less competition for, for it. Right, and so uh, one point to that was that when you hear things in the media, when people say hidden network, secret network, all this and that, and well, why did Mr. Spitz Rubenstein set that up and why did he have access before city staff knew about that network? I mean, that's where people are concerned. Why does he know that and was he signing into that network? And it's unfortunate that we can't confirm 100% that he did not, I'm not saying he did, but it would be nice to know 100% that he did not sign into that network while at Central Count. Okay, so that was my last question regarding Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein. Now on to the city clerk, just a few questions. And I really didn't go into the meeting intended on asking these, but some of the other questions from the council made me think of these things that I've been thinking of. So in the uh, clerk, city clerk's job description, uh, under essential functions, it states, serves as the city's election official, coordinating all aspects of the city's general, primary, and special elections, including administering all phases of elections, 
within the city and directing the staff in maintaining voter registration files and absentee voting, training, election officials, staffing polling places, interpreting election laws and canvassing results. So according to her essential, fun when I say her, I mean the former clerk, the essential functions of that position all the way through the uh, election, those are basically the requirements of her position for which she was trained, educated, and experienced in. And a lot of that, as you said, Clerk, I'm, I'm sorry, Attorney Chavez, are spelled out by Wisconsin statutes and state law. Uh, so she is, just for the sake of the public, the mayor appoints the position, the council confirms the position. So the former clerk, we confirmed her as a council on a vote of 11 to 1 in April 2020. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So when we appoint when we uh, confirm appointments, we basically believe that that person is skilled, competent, and able to perform the duties of that position. That's why we voted for her 11 to 1. But my understanding is that she is a fulfilling a statutorily re required position, and her direct supervisor would be the finance director. Is that correct? Yes, yes, I do believe that the direct supervisor is the finance director. And attorney, um, attorney Chavez, uh, former clerk Teske had no written, uh, she was never written up, she never had any performance improvement plan, is that correct? The person to ask about personnel issues, but I also would say that that is not properly appropriate for discussion in open session. Fair enough, I respect that, thank you. Um, so the reason I'm getting at this is that we, as a city government, there are certain positions, when, once they're appointed and confirmed, we basically have to allow those folks to do those jobs. And if there are any performance issues, you, you know, then the council, in my opinion, in this situation probably should have been notified. So when Teske took a leave, um, should the city of Green Bay Council, city council, should we have voted on her replacement to be the official clerk during the remainder of the election season? No, the, the need for an appointment of a clerk arises when you don't have somebody already designated to fill that position. By designation of the deputy clerk, the, the responsibilities of that position actually dictate that person steps in um, in the absence or um, vacancy of the clerk position. And so that one had already been decided. You guys had already decided by approving that job description that the deputy clerk, which at the time is Kim Waite, would be the person who would fill in for, for, um, for Chris Teske. Okay, this is, I'll, I'll end by just making a comment why I'm frustrated is that now we hear a lot of things that happen and the frustration she, that she had and then the consultants and all these things that happen. A lot of the council were caught off guard, quite frankly, with a lot of this stuff that has come to the public light. And it makes us look bad as a council, in my opinion. And had we known, had we known the time that former clerk Teske uh, went on leave of absence, that there was tension, that there was frustration, that there were issues, we probably would have questioned a little more at that time, which probably would have made us question the different consultants and advisors that the city were engaging with. So that, those are my frustrations. Uh, take it for what it's worth, but thank you for answering my questions. That's all I have, Mayor. Thanks, Elder. Any additional comments or questions? Elder LeFevre? Yes, I was wondering why I would be concerned that um, when Chris Teske left, that someone else took her place. When when, when that's the normal uh, process that we have, don't we have? Uh, don't we actually believe in our employees? I would think that it would be fine. I mean, the next person steps in and takes over because that's the process that we have that we've already put in place. I don't understand this questioning why we as a council should should have been brought in with that decision. That wasn't our place then. I'm sorry. I think it was fine what happened because that person 
is a de- is the deputy clerk knows everything that the clerk does. It's a it's a process that we have put in place. I just want to bring that up. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Anything else? I just make one comment, Mayor. You go ahead. Uh, my thoughts are that uh, when we brought in outsiders from New York to help in our elections, uh, generally the for the last probably since we've been doing elections, we don't generally bring in outsiders to run our elections. I think that's a problem. I, I think moving forward, the city should not bring in outsiders uh, that, you know, we, we took outside money and, and, and we went along with some of the things that uh, were proposed, I think with, with how they how it was handled. And, and I think when we bring in outside people to run our elections, we run into a lot of problems and there's a lot of confusion uh, I think that's some of the problem as well. Mr. Uh, Spitzer Rubenstein, uh, he's not part of our fabric here in Green Bay. And uh, I, I think that that, that that was a problem for the city. Uh, I don't think we needed him personally. Uh, I think that uh, we're capable of running our own elections and when we bring in outsiders to run our local elections. I, I think there's a lot of problems and I would not support uh, bringing in outsiders to run our elections in the future at all, personally. Oh, point of clarification. Mr. Mayor. Point of clarification. Yeah, Alder Scannell, go ahead. Yeah, we do not bring in outside help to run our election. He did yes. not run our election. I wish Thank people stop saying that. Right. That is not true. It's it, for the public to say it and be uh, confused is one thing. As Alders, we should know he did not run our election. I'm not saying he run them, but we brought in outside yeah, advisors. You and use, like that. Alder. Uh, I think that's a problem. Um, we haven't brought him in in the past. I don't think we should bring him in the future as well. Thank you. I don't want to see him at our next uh, uh, elections at all. Personally, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? I'll do the favor. I just want to uh, piggyback on Alder Scannell. Uh, please, Alders, don't say things like that. This is the falsehood that's out there. Come on, please. Let's talk about what's the real facts. Thank you. All right. We have yeah. a big agenda in front of us. Alder Johnson. Just a quick point of information, because Alder Lefebvre had asked the question about um, the transfer of, of authority uh, to the interim clerk. I, I think the reason the question was being asked, because I had previously asked it at a different meeting as well, is because state statute dictates that your clerk needs to be appointed by the city council. So I think there's just a question of whether or not um, the the interim clerk also had to, that action had to be taken by city council, but uh, per attorney Chavez's explanation, that was not a necessity. But I think that's why the question had been asked. Thanks, Alder. All right, ready for a motion? Motion received and placed on file. Second. Motion received and placed on file, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Final discussion? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Who's nay? The ayes have it, and that has been received and placed on file. Uh, now we're moving to resolutions. Um, so I would maybe entertain a motion to suspend the rules on the Can first. Suspend the rules on the first, was it five? Or Can, first yeah. five? Just uh, looking to confirm that. Uh, one through five. Yep, one through yeah. five. Motion has been made by Alder Scannell to suspend the rules and take up resolutions one through five with one roll call vote. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion, uh, motion to approve. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt, made by Alder Corpus Dac, seconded by Alder Scannell. Sure. Discussion. <coughs> right, we will use the board. Uh, the number, could we separate them, please? Uh, we suspended the rules, Alder. What, which one are you talk, referring to? Uh, one and four. I guess I had voted too quickly before I could jump in and ask for separation. Ah, got it. Um, uh, what's the appropriate motion there, Attorney Chavez? Reconsideration? I, I, I would consider my, oh, did I make the motion to, no, so who made the motion to adopt someone? I did. You can, well, we, you, 
Go ahead, Attorney You can General. still take up all the ones that have not been um, asked to be separated. You can take those okay. ones separately and take them together. Okay, so you'd like to hold one and four, was it, Alder? Yeah, please. Okay. So we'll just do two, three, and five with one roll call vote. And we'll use the board on that. The two, three, and five. Um, Mayor, could you be a little more clear? Which ones are we voting on? Two, three, and five. Thank you. Or, my apologies that uh, I said four, I meant six. <laughs> well, six, six wasn't six, in there. So. Okay, six so is out already, okay. Yep. Just, so yeah. one and four. So Alder, Alder Weir, you're comfortable with two, three, yep, five? Yeah, one and four. Then? Yeah, one, one and four. I has it originally had it, yep. I'm still confused. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you, you, we're, we're good as we are. Yeah, we can vote on this. <laughs> okay, but I just, just a little bit of clarity. Are we... Comfortable voting on two through five? Right. Two through five, okay. okay. Well, I, okay, I'll ask on number four, perhaps uh, Celestine. There's a, just a Scrivener's error on number on number four. It should say the years 2021, 2022 for the uh, legislative years. That's something you can just correct on your own. It, yeah. it says 2021, 2021. <laughs> 2021, 2022, yes, we can correct All that. right, perfect, and that's fine. Okay, got it. Very good. So this is a roll call vote on resolutions two through five. Two, two, five. Uh, okay. Oh. Not coming up on the board. Well, uh, so everyone has voted. Alder Vanderlees, did you intend to vote aye? Yes, aye. Okay. That's how you're recorded here. So those uh, are adopted. Um, so resolution one, Alder Weary. Thank you. I uh, had some questions, and I don't know who the appropriate person would be to ask uh, regarding the resolution. I don't know if there's someone from the committee here or someone who sits on the committee who's on staff. Yes, so Melissa Schmitz, who is okay. our uh, resiliency coordinator, Perfect. is on the line. So go ahead, Alder Weary. Thanks. On the, uh, I'm looking at the near the end. It says, be it further resolved, the Common Council and City of Green Bay hereby establishes a climate goal of 100% clean energy. Um, what is clean energy defined as? Does that include natural gas? Uh, no, it does not. Okay, so it is not- That's included. primarily renew the renewable energy and clean energy okay. is sort of a broad term, but it mostly includes renewable energy and greater emphasis on energy efficiency. So not natural gas. Okay, thank you. And then um, <clears throat> is there any, you know, the year shows by 2050, is there any research to show this is um, doable or possible and then costs to accomplish that? You know, given we have fire engines, dump trucks, large fleet of vehicles, do we have data to show what this costs the city? Since we, want uh, we don't to do this? have data to show actual costs at this point. Um, part of the work that the Sustainability Commission um, is doing, uh, along with, with my efforts now as well, is forming a climate action plan. And that's part of it. So this this resolution is to join the, this co this new coalition that's formed in Wisconsin and to also set the goals. So that's the first step. The state of Wisconsin has also, um, they also have this goal, the, the same goal. And many municipalities throughout Wisconsin have also set similar goals. Right. Um, the first step will be creating a plan on how to get there. I appreciate it. Um yeah, other than at the beginning where there's some whereas is, and I think we should insert some wording as like may increase or may help to slow climate change. The, the last part is what troubled me, eliminating natural gas. Um, a lot of our plants run on that right now, and it's a pretty pl plentiful, clean burning uh, energy source. And then I, uh, I will I'm, say not, I'm, not, I'm not asking questions right now. I'm commenting. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. No more. I didn't have any questions. Uh, maybe someone else. Uh, um, and then not having research to show what it might cost um, and how would it affect us. I, 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 
personally can't support just because of those items. So that's all. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell and then Alder Lefebvre. Uh, this is a, a resolution that it's a goal, and we've already signed, we've already uh, voted on similar goals. Uh, this and it, it does not take any authority away from this body. Everything still has to come through this body. So this is nothing very radical at all that we're doing here. All this does is it allows us to join this coalition, which will help us uh, going forward. It makes our job easier. Uh, but it does not take away any of our authority, and it doesn't, uh, you know, we don't get taken to a woodshed and spanked if something uh, doesn't happen here. I mean, you know, these are all goals that we've all approved already in past uh, uh, issues we voted on. So there there's really isn't, uh, I, I don't, really don't understand any concern with this at all. There's, th this is nothing new other than we're uh, going to align ourselves with the body that will help us uh, get the job done. Alder Lefebvre and then Alder Burnett. Um, yeah, according to this, then we got 29 years to work on this. And I think, you know, I think we got a lot of smart people here. We are starting to go into more electric cars. And there are uh, there are communities that are actually going into uh, electric vehicles, big vehicles for their departments. And this is something that is going to ha I think it's just going to happen. And we have to realize that we're going to have to be on board working on this or we're going to be left behind. So I think this is just fine. And natural gas is not carbon neutral. I know we have a lot. We are, we're going to position from the coal is going to be done and then we're going to position into the next phase, which is a lot of companies are going into the natural gas, and then they're going to position, they're going to move on to the next. There are going to be a lot of communities that are going to move ahead on a lot of this, and I think we have to also be on board, or like I said, we're going to be left behind, and it'll hurt our whole economy right here in Brown County if we're not I'm serious and thinking about this. So I think we need to support this. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, just real quick, Mayor. I don't want to disagree with uh, Alder Scandal on anything, such a minor issue. But one thing we said that the city still has authority, that's true. I would hope that the city council still retains authority on any big picture things, any policy of changes. On the last line, just for a point of clarification, it says, be it further resolved that the City of Green Bay Resiliency Coordinator is authorized to comment or intervene on behalf of the City of Green Bay in contested rate cases, dockets, investigations, and other proceedings before the Wisconsin or the Public Service Commission. So it's just a, a minor, minor point that while we still have the ultimate authority through this resolution, we are, by written word anyways, vesting authority for the resiliency coordinator to speak on behalf of the city of Green Bay, which I think would be an appropriate thing for that position. And I and I really respect and trust Ms. Schmitz. But I have no concern there, but I just want to make it clear that that in this resolution we are authorizing permission to act on the city's behalf. So it's all Alder Scannell just yeah. Well maybe maybe I should let Melissa speak to it if, if she what 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 that what that means sure sure so i have been attending monthly meetings virtual monthly meetings with this group and it's primarily a, a policy affecting committee or coalition um all of the people that are on the coalition are um sustainability coordinators or officers they're staff people like me on behalf of their city um I'm the only one with the title of resiliency coordinator, but I do have almost 14 years of electric utility experience leading up to my position with the city. So I am very well versed in the electric utility industry. Um, and then I worked for about three and a half years for the Focus on Energy program. So as far as my credentials go with, with having knowledge of this, um, I, you know, I, I can confidently speak to that. Also, um, the, the power of the group really is that we collaborate on comments to the PSC on certain issues that affect cities that have climate plans 
to get more renewable energy in the hands of a broader group of, um, of residents and citizens in Wisconsin. Um, and I have, um, I consulted with the mayor and with, with our law department on anything. It's not just me saying, okay, this is the city of Green Bay and this is what it is. There's, there's collaboration and there's discussion. And um, so if, if there are any concerns regarding that last line, um, I, I hope that that puts, I guess that makes, makes people feel better. Thank you for that. Uh, Alder Dorf and then Alder Gerlach. Thanks. I just thought that the coordinator had some pertinent comments to make when Alderman Weary was not asking questions, but was instead just making comments. And so I wanted to hear um, from her, from you, um, Melissa. Did, did you have some comments to make that were, that would be interested in hearing? Or perhaps you've now forgotten what it was that I think it was related to natural gas, perhaps. Oh, well, I mean, I do recognize that natural gas is a, a, a cleaner fuel source than coal. The primary um, goal right now, or one of the things that we're supporting is to be retiring coal plants. There's, a, there's an actual goal of retiring coal plants by, I believe, the year 2040. Natural gas is not necessarily it, you know, eventually that's going to happen, but the, you know, it, the bigger goal is, is the retiring of coal. Thank you. That was very interesting. And I do support this resolution. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach and then Alder Vanderleest. I just wondered if it would be appropriate to open the floor. I wondered if there are maybe people here who have been waiting to speak on this issue. Is this the time to do it? Yeah, if we do have um, citizens who would like to speak, absolutely. Okay. Motion has been made by Alder Gerlach, seconded by Alder Johnson to open the floor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, if you could please raise your hand. I do not see anyone who raised their hand. I, if you I think there is a uh, Seth, Seth Hoffmeister. Looks like he's raising his hand. Okay, if you could unmute yourself then, please, and state your name and address for the record. Hi, everybody. Seth Hoffmeister, 1136 Law Street, um, also the chair of the Sustainability Commission. Um, wasn't uh, planning on um, speaking, uh, but since you kindly opened the floor, I figured I'd just uh, give the opportunity or take the opportunity to speak in favor um, of this resolution. Um, I uh, think that it's very consistent with a lot of the work that we've already been doing um, at the city in terms of the 100% clean energy goal. Uh, as many of you know, we started our commission at the end of 2018 and uh, voted on, uh, created a work plan uh, with these 100% clean energy goals that council has already approved. Um, and again, like Melissa said, this is very consistent with what the state of Wisconsin has done, what uh, probably a dozen other Wisconsin communities have done. Um, and what uh, 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 the Wisconsin Energy Corporation, the parent company of um, uh, WPS has already done. So really uh, think that by joining this uh, association as well, it allows us to, like Melissa said, uh, learn from other communities who are already um, doing a lot of this work and we can find really cost effective um, ways to uh, implement some of these goals. Again, these will all but um, I hope uh, you all can support us. Thanks for your time. Thank you. If Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Vanderly, second by Alder Scannell. All in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. <clears throat> the ayes have it. The floor is closed. Alder Vanderly, I believe. Yes. Um, I just want to remind the council that. Uh, it took about 40 years from go from incandescent lights to the LED lights. And uh, coal plants, they're gonna be gone. But natural gas is gonna be here a while. Just for example, uh, I've been involved with the electrical industry for like 40 years. And it, it's a slow process to change some of the things. Just for example, in Brown County, wind energy is not real popular. We don't have the space 
uh, for the windmills, and, and we've had a lot of problems with the, the uh, Shirley Wind Farm site, which, in, which is in Brown County. And, and some of the goals, you know, I understand the industry dictates a lot of the, of the energy goals. Your high efficiency furnaces that are on natural gas, they save you probably about around 30% from the old furnaces that we had years back. And, and natural gas, gas is much cleaner. And uh, I think the natural gas part is gonna be around with us for quite a while. And, uh, you know, until we can come up with something better. And, and I think, you know, the industry kind of dictates what we're gonna be doing. And, and it's nice that the city is going to be involved with the, keeping uh, abreast of the changes and, and where we can save money. Uh, I think that, you know, as far as your uh, energy sources, as far as, you know, we energies, you know, they're trying to get people to change the bulbs as far as, you know, go to LED bulbs where you can use 13 watts versus 75 in the same way with the high efficiency furnaces. I think the industry is doing a good job right now as far as, you know, bringing these products forward where we can save money. And, and I, you know, it's nice to have these commissions, but I, I think that, you know, we're going to have to kind of follow the, follow the industry as far as what we're going to be doing. And uh, I think they should put natural gas back on the, uh, as not a, a bad source of energy at this time, because how are we going to heat city hall? How are we going to heat our homes? And I know that they have goals, but you know, they should also make a little notation there as far as, you know, natural gas is a, is a pretty good source of energy and as far as a pretty clean source. If you look around our neighborhoods 40 years ago or 45 years ago, you'd see a lot of black smoke. There's not much black smoke floating around right now. And I, and I think our paper mills, our, our industry is definitely looking at it. Uh, the new project that they did on the east side with uh, Green Bay packaging, uh, much cleaner, water, air pollution, everything. So I, I think the industry is doing a good job and, you know, uh, but, you know, to remove natural gas from a, a source of energy, I think it could be not so good, but I'm just giving the heads up on that. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I support the resolution. I, I think, I don't know anybody that would say, hey, I think continuing to burn, you know, bad, bad energy is a good thing. Um, so I, I think we can start to move in that direction. This doesn't obligate future city councils to anything. And quite frankly, the private sector in conjunction with the federal and state government mandates are gonna move this way faster than city council ever will. Um, I, I mean, it, private sector is already um, moving these types of initiatives forward. And I think we're just going to be the beneficiary of that. When I read the resolution, there's only one thing um, that kind of I had to reread twice. And it was that notion, again, of, of giving um, our, our staff the ability to testify in front of PAC. And, they, you know, the more I read it, the more I contemplated that, you know what, staff already does this. We're just questioning it because it's in front of us right now. Uh, they're not making major policy decisions on, on behalf of city council. They're just advocating for certain issues that, that directly impact us. And, um, you know, I've, I've been with, with staff members who have testified in front of committees before. So I don't think that's, that's anything that's out of the ordinary or controversial. Uh, I have all the faith and confidence in our staff in, in, um, in, in terms of how they represent the city of Green Bay. And if there is a major policy decision, that needs to be made, of course, that will come before us. So um, I fully support. Thanks, Alder. Any final comments on the resolution? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any further discussion? We will use the board. Burnett? I am, I'm a yes. I'm sorry. If you could record that, Celestine. And that is adopted unanimously, 12 to 0. On to resolution 6. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. 
Discussion? Alder uh, I can, I'll defer to Alder Weary, that's okay. Sure, Alder Weary and then Alder Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just have short comments, really. Um, and first, I think uh, a couple of people have touched on this, including Alder Johnson, um, concerning the November election. There really are two issues, probably more, being merged all into one, and they shouldn't be. You know, there's the administration of the election, and then there's the work of our poll workers. Um, I, like many, was a poll worker, uh, not in, in November, but certainly in, in spring <laughs> during that. And uh, I have full confidence in our poll workers and supervisors. Uh, and we all do, and we've all expressed that. So it really has nothing to do with that part. So um, they performed uh, exceptionally well, as usual. Um, and I know this has been brought up as well, and this is important to bring up looking at the bigger picture and not just you know locally. There are two major pending complaints or investigations that are still ongoing. Uh, the first is the Wisconsin Campaign and Elections Committee and their investigation into the 2020 election. Uh, the city is going to appear and answer questions. And it sounds like the committee is transitioning more into a formal investigation where they can have subpoena powers. So i um, interested to see what happens there because they'll be focusing on the state as well. Uh, and then secondly, there was a 300 plus page, pretty big complaint filed by several Green Bay residents. And that was filed with the Wisconsin Election Commission. And that's still moving along right now. I think they're it was delayed maybe a month. So that, that's a, a really big one because that's complaints from Green Bay residents uh, directly to the Wisconsin Election Commission. And I think even we all received an email from um, someone who was on the complaint, uh, former clerk Duno, who said she's not talking here tonight because she may need to testify down the line. Uh, and, that, and that could be a case for some of the others on the complaint. Um, many times, you know, we talk about this, we've talked about this on many, many other issues, but many times an outside investigation uh, and review is warranted and appropriate to avoid any appearance of wrongdoing and the inherent perils of a self-investigation. Um, I think for this one, you know, what was, you know, was the city's clerk, the city clerk's ability and state granted authority to run the election usurped internally and by the grant providers? You know, we've got perhaps some answers to that, but I don't know if it's been delved into and we've heard all the, the people involved. Uh, secondly, what was the full role of the helper from New York, um, Mr. Spitzer Rubinstein, um, during the election? So I will be abstaining on this vote because of the current Wisconsin Assembly investigation and the Wisconsin Election Commission uh, complaint. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, I concur with uh, much of what Alder Weary had stated. It's a really a, a, a false choice for the council. Uh, a yes or no. A yes means that we have full confidence. It says right in the resolution, full confidence. Full confidence means we have full knowledge of everything. And to get full knowledge, you have to have full disclosure. And I really appreciate Clerk uh, uh, Attorney Chavez's report and answered many of the questions. But we don't know as a council every single thing, every single decision, every single, single interaction. We don't know. We know we don't know everything. OK, it's not possible for a person to know everything. That's why investigations are conducted and carried forward with to vote no means that we're creating scandal. We're saying that as a council or can't council member that we believe that city staff did something wrong and there's no there's no way that i can make that determination that again it's it's really a false choice and i agree with all the weary i've been giving this a lot of thought uh i'm going to abstain and, and the other issue too he had mentioned a couple things and i'll reiterate it on april 7th there were five city residents that filed a 33 page complaint with the wec wisconsin elections commission it included 392 pages of documents, many documents that were received by uh, folks through open records requests. For each council member who votes yes, that you have full confidence, be sure that you read every single one of those emails. Be sure that you reviewed every single one of those emails. I did not review every one. I'd like to have, but you know, the duties of our position sometimes 
give us other duties that we're not always able to get to everything. And so from what I understand that has been extended that the city has to respond to that complaint by May, 20, May 25th. Kenosha and Racine residents in those communities also file complaints with the Wisconsin Elections Commission. So as much as some of us would like to think that this resolution will kind of wrap this up in a tidy bow and that it's over, I don't think it will be over. Uh, I think that there will be a lot of discussions about our elections and I don't want us to rush into uh, voting yes or no on a resolution with that pending. There's also uh, the Wisconsin Elections uh, Assembly Elections and Campaigns Committee. And I would hope that the mayor and the city attorney do testify on behalf of the city uh, at that hearing. And I would hope that that would be regardless of who shows up, whether it be the majority party only or the majority and the minority party. Hopefully the assembly folks, higher level of government, they all grow up and they all do their job and they stop playing these partisan games on both ends. So I look forward to that testimony and I'm sure Attorney Chavez and Mayor Genrick will represent the city well. So I, I, I'm going to abstain as well. And I'm going to abstain because we as a body, we are the, we are an independent elected body. So if there comes something of this investigation, at this point, we really have to be impartial because if there's an action or some mechanism that we have to vote on as a council, as a governing body of the city of Green Bay, we shouldn't be voting yes or no on a resolution because that kind of creates a bias. Like we are basically saying yes or no. And then in the future, who knows where this all heads? It could be that the city did absolutely nothing wrong. And that's what I want. I want that the city did absolutely nothing wrong. And when that day comes, it would be nice to know that. But until then, by us voting yes or no, we are basically taking a position on something that we really should be impartial on. You get full confidence by having full knowledge you only have full knowledge by full disclosure, and we are still finding out more daily, it seems. So uh, I'm very confidently going to abstain, again, not creating scandal or suspicion on any spectrum. Okay, I believe in government, I believe in people in power that will do the right, just, and moral thing. I'm hoping that's what happens through this entire investigation. Really tired of the politics, tired of the partisanship. I'm just hoping we all can be reasonable and say, Let's abstain from this vote, and then we'll we'll vote on it whenever these investigations are complete. So, thank you, Mayor. Those are my comments. Thanks, Alder. Yeah. Alder Gorf, and then Alder Lefebvre. Thank you. You know, initially when we didn't vote on this um, a few few weeks ago, it was because well, we we need that report. We we need that report done by mm -hmm. the, the attorney, and then it was yeah, we didn't really have time to look over that report. You know, but we get that report. And we'll be able to vote on the resolution. So we got the report. We all accepted the report. We thought it was a good report. Um, I think it, it proves that the allegations are false. Um, I don't think the time that to, to express full confidence in our elections is after everybody else in the world expresses full confidence in our elections. I think we are the city council of Green Bay. This is the time that we stand behind what we know to be true, that we support our, our elections committee, we support the way our elections were run, we support our mayor, our staff, our clerk, our former clerk, our future clerks. We support Green Bay. And we make that statement by voting yes to this resolution, expressing confidence that we did it right, that we took every possible precaution and we did things the right way. So I will ask all of you to stand up for Green Bay. Please vote yes on this resolution. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre? Yes, um, I'm definitely gonna vote yes on this. And one reason is that those who are uh, got these complaints, Green Bay, I don't know if it's Milwaukee, but it's uh, Racine, Kenosha. Guess what? These are all, what, run by Democratic mayors. If they were really, really upset because of the grant money coming from this outside entity, this one who's partisan, 
they would go after every community that received this grant money and said, there's something wrong because they received this money and this is partisan. No, it's just they're going after the communities that happen to be run by a Democratic mayor. That's all this is. It's completely partisan. There's no basis to this. I'm voting for this. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Stoyer, I believe. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Again, there's good points on both sides on this, and then, uh, many times it, it's very tough. I, you know, I think initially I was really looking forward to you, Mayor, and and uh, Attorney uh, Chavez, you know, speaking in Madison. I've been waiting for that, and I, you know, in, in my heart of hearts, I feel that you know what we did very good things. I think we did fine. However. I can understand why, you know, full confidence, you know, I think that that leaves a little bit open and it's, you know, we're, we're taking a stance saying, yep, everything was perfect. We did a great job. And I, I would feel more comfortable uh, after both you and attorney Chavez testify. And I feel that I, that I would go along with with that. You know, I, I know that people are looking for full confidence right now. You know, it's more or less a statement to say like, well, maybe nine or ten of us would vote yes on this, and we can take that to Madison and show people that yep, we really did did the did the right thing. There's no way that we know every nuance that happened in the election. You know, we 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 have our beliefs, we have our political beliefs too many times, but I. You know, I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say how I'm gonna vote on this. I just want to let you know that I would feel a lot better after both you and Attorney Chavez do testify. And if there's problems down there because of that, it'll be noted. We will watch. We will watch very carefully. And I, I wish you all Godspeed on that. So I'm not gonna say yes or no right now. I'm gonna wait until uh, the vote is called. But right now, I, that's my concern. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Garlock and then Alder Johnson, and then Alder Scannell. <clears throat> this is not going to end because this is not a search for the truth. That is the problem. This is not a search for the truth. And we can have our attorney and our mayor go and testify a thousand times. No one here is looking for the truth. We have, through a pandemic that we couldn't control, ended up in a in a very difficult situation that has by through no one's fault invited in people who have nothing to do with Green Bay, who have nothing to do with our election and saw this as an opportunity to come in and stir the pot and use this, manipulate this situation to make trouble. And the truth is what is the victim in this every single time. Just look at some of the things we heard tonight, some of the allegations. Um, we were told uh, election laws were broken. I'm sorry, but that's exactly the words that were said. Election laws were broken. Now, when I asked about it, that person said, well, it was only alleged. But you see, that's not a search for the truth. We have been told that we took money from Mark Zuckerberg. We didn't take a dime from Mark Zuckerberg. We received a grant from the Center for Tech and Civic Life, and Zuckerberg happens to be one of the big donors to that. But does that mean we took money from them? Now, somebody on the council did mention a former um, uh, elected official who did email all of us, and she said very little. She said she would not want us to support this, and she said we uh, she wouldn't be speaking tonight, but she did give us a link to a study that told how terrible our election was. And you know me, I can't resist those dang links. And so I looked into it. It was from the MacGyver Institute. It said that our city attorney had inadvertently um, pointed the finger at, at people in Green Bay in, in leadership who had done bad things. And I'm, I'm not quoting it, I'm not saying it right. So I looked at this MacGyver Institute, my goodness, the, one of the biggest donors to the MacGyver Institute is Harry Bradley, one of the founders of the John Birch Society. 
Now, are we going to say that they take money from the John Birch Society? It's the truth that is suffering here. Do you know that some of the officers of the MacGyver Institute have been convicted of election violations in the state of Wisconsin? And one of them has been banned from running for public office. And this is what we're supposed to look at and say, oh my goodness, look at all the terrible things that happened in Green Bay. The truth has nothing to do with any of this. I say, if we don't put an end to this, it ain't gonna end. Now let's put an end to it tonight. I can't do much more of this. I'm getting old. Thank you, Alder. Alder Johnson and then Alder Scannell. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think the notion that the passage of this resolution is somehow going to magically put an end to this is is really misplaced. Um, I'm going to restate some things that I said at the last time this issue came up. And, and I want to start first by saying and reiterating emphatically that I do not believe that the city of Green Bay or or its administration is responsible for any malfeasance related to this election. But that's not what this is about. It, I mean, it, of course, that's what a lot of the accusations are about. But what we're doing with this resolution is making a broad sweeping claim that everything was perfect and we think that this issue is going to magically evaporate. And unfortunately, I don't think that that's what's going to happen here. We've talked a lot, of, you know, I, I brought the issue up before, folks. This is a public relations campaign disguised as a resolution that reads like an affidavit and the affidavit intending to say, we are innocent. It's a public relations campaign and we are losing. This is a resolution that's meant to appease partisan politics, but it divides us further as a community. Who is going to be excited by the passage of this? I can assure you that when this passes, you have those folks who are still disgruntled with the election process that are going to use it for fodder to continue to feel the, feel the division. If we want this to go away, you have to be willing to recognize that people are going to say things that you cannot correct. Folks, we have open complaints yet with the Wisconsin Elections Commission that have not been properly adjudicated. So by passing this today, we're basically saying that their complaints don't matter. And you know what? They may go through that judicial process like every complaint should, and it should be handled by the judicial system. Or in this case, it likely, I mean, it, it probably won't be the judicial system that handles it, but the Wisconsin Elections Commission. That's the process to handle these types of complaints. And, and I agree with this, this, the fact that we're kind of being put in a no-win situation here by having to choose where it's almost like saying we support and defend our city or we don't. And I think that's a false, it's a false comparison, folks. It's a false comparison. I, I believe with the information and the facts that are presented to us thus far, including the report presented to us from Attorney Chavez, I do not see anything that makes think that we've done anything improper. But like I said, I cannot make a broad sweeping claim that that's the case when there are open complaints that have not been resolved yet. I do think that abstention is a reasonable approach because I don't wanna take a vote against our city. I don't. And so that's the way I'm going to vote. And if, and if you know what, if, if this, uh, the Wisconsin Election Commission goes through that process, no further complaints are filed against the city, and this were to come back to us and say, you know, we want our support, I still don't think I could even do the broad sweeping claim because there, there's comments being made that say, this is what it's meant to do, yet the verbiage in the resolution doesn't state that. I mean, I agree that I wanted to do a lot of the things that Alderdorf said. I wanna show that I support our staff. I wanna show that I support our election workers, but that's not the verbiage in the resolution. And the verbiage in the resolution matters. So that's all I have to say, Mayor, thank you. So Alder, Alder Scannell. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, full confidence doesn't mean that we believe this election was perfect. It means that we believe there was no malfeasance and that our staff acted appropriately. That's the full confidence. And I have no problem stating that with full confidence at all. 
This whole thing is bunk. It's just bunk. And I'm tired of playing bunk. I'm getting cranky too. All the, all the, like I'm getting old. Uh, this is all, all the allegations. Oh, if you got that an email from uh, a former uh, clerk from the county. She's not going to come talk to us, though. She had nothing in the email. She's not going to talk to us because she may talk elsewhere. What kind of bunk is that? She can still talk to us if she's got something. She should be talking to us if she's got something. She's got nothing. Otherwise, she'd be here. I'm supposed to give her credence when we've given her an opportunity to come before us so we could make a informed decision? And she says, oh, I can't do it? Bunk. Now, all the uh, we've had people talk about... You know, uh, uh, giving out all these allegations of what, what went wrong. You know, that the clerk was pushed out. We know that's not true. That uh, Zuckerberg is a flaming liberal. And we, you know, we, we, we've, <laughs> and he's influenced our election. That is crazy. That the Center for Civic Life ran our election. They did not run our election. Uh, that the election wasn't perfect. And so there's, we got to investigate. No election is perfect. There isn't an election that's ever been had that's been perfect. That's not the question here. The question is malfeasance. The question is something illegal. None of that is true. And it's been six months. If there's any shred of evidence, that should have come up. It hasn't. And to say now, oh, all these other allegations have come up, bunk. It's a lot of bunk. This all goes back to a political party with a political head who refused to accept the uh, defeat in the election. This all circles back to that. And it's just shameful to be giving that any credence. It's just shameful to be well, uh, not standing behind our staff. I have no problem standing behind our staff and what happened. We know enough to do that. So, uh, and, then, and the thing with the network now, all these allegations, all these uh, conspiracies. Oh, maybe he had access to the internet. Ooh, that doesn't give him access to any voting, uh, uh, any of the votes or anything else. It's just one bunk allegation after another. And why? Not because there's a shred of evidence that there was anything inappropriate done. It's because a major party is kicking at the election. And I'm not going to stand by and just say, oh, I got to give you credence. It was like, you know, I knew a lot of good people during the, and yes, I'm going to mention it, the, the anti-fluoride. Uh, wonderful people. I love them. They probably don't care much for me anymore because they're full of bunk. And for us to give that any credence, I think, is a huge mistake. And I think it's a big mistake for us to give this any more credence than it deserves. It's no more different than if someone's making allegations that Sasquatch stole the election. What, I need to investigate that? Bunk. There needs to be an allegation that has some merit. And for six months, there hasn't been any. And there's still, so, uh, I, I, I'm sorry there are some alders who've got their heads so turned around by a major political party that they feel they have to give them some space. Uh, that they're just wrong, and I'm sorry that people can't just stand up to them and say they're wrong. They're wrong, and I'm willing to support this resolution now. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. So the only concern I've heard is is about the word full, or full confidence, um, and that's just the title. So it, if I, would you guys like to amend the title? W would you like to suggest an amendment because? Um, we, we did face a pandemic condition. We did administer the elections according to the statutes. We did maintain control of all election facilities and technology. We did form an ad hoc committee. We did approve purchase of voting technology. We did um, prepare a template for a safe and fair election. Need I go on? All of these things are facts. So if your only problem with the resolution is two words in the title, amend it. Alder Johnson, how would you like to amend it? You, you don't have, you don't want to talk about it, Alder Johnson? 
call a point of order, and I don't think there's the back and forth that's allowed. You have the floor, Alderdorf. Oh, she's allowed, to, she's allowed to ask ask a question of you, Alder. Would yeah, you like I'm asking you a question. How would you like to amend the title? Because nothing else has been discussed about why you, you and a couple of others plan to abstain. So if the title is annoying to you, let's amend the title. If you want to do the back and forth, I think I've made it very clear that that's not my issue. <laughs> no, that just the, whether or not you wanted to respond to the question. No, I, I, if you'd like to offer an amendment, Alderdorf, you certainly have the ability to do that. You have the floor right now. Okay, Alderdorf. Thank you. Um, well, this, I'm going to uh, probably defer to Alder Gerlach in one, one moment, but, I, but this resolution was written based on researched facts. We watched meetings, we sat, and we spent hours putting this resolution together. So the only objection I've heard is 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 that the title um, is is objectionable. Um, so I'd like to defer to Alder Gerlach because Alder she had Gerlach. a lot to do with writing this. Alder Gerlach and then Alder Burnett. I would um, move to amend the title of this resolution to make it say "Resolution Expressing Confidence in the Administration of Green Bay's August and November 2020 Elections." I'll second that. Motion was made to amend the resolution by Alder Gerlach, seconded by Alder Dorf. Discussion on that amendment? Yeah. Alder Burnett? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I respect Alder Dorf's or Alder Gerlach's amendment. I'm going to abstain all the way around. It wasn't just that word, that's part of it. I did say that that was part of it, but it's the issue as a whole. Like we are, we are affirming a resolution that we have a report. You know, respect Attorney Chavez, but it was an internal report. Let's not forget that. It was an internal report. And Attorney Chavez, I guess I do have a question. There are a lot of alders who have spoken very strongly in favor of the resolution and abstaining or spoken in abstaining. When it comes to bias, if we as a council have to make a vote or make a decision on future actions, whether it be the Wisconsin legislature or a lawsuit, would the, the alders who vote yes or no to this resolution, will they have created some sort of bias for them, a conflict of interest that will affect their future votes? If I may answer. No, uh, Attorney Chavez, I think you might be muted or? You are correct. So the issue with um, bias only comes up in the context of quasi-judicial proceedings, not legislative proceedings. So the only time that there would be some kind of conflict um, or something of that nature is if something comes up and you're having to vote related to a specific person. Mm -hmm or specific entity. Um, I don't, I, I mean, if we're, if you are out potential for lawsuits, no, I don't think so because that would be something the council would be deciding um, as a whole. And it would generally be in defense of the, like the, the, the council's obligations to pro, to do, you know, to act on behalf of the city. Um, and, and so I, I don't think that there would be conflict in that context. It's literally just in the context of quasi judicial proceedings when it comes up. Attorney Chavez, so a vote of yes or no, whether it's amended no times or five times, a vote yes or no and a vote to abstain are all reasonable votes and legal votes to take? Those are all provided, yes. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Attorney Chavez. I appreciate the amendment, Alder Dorf. Uh, you know, that was part of it, obviously, but it was the, the, the actual issue as a whole. I want to keep my I want to be completely unbiased if, if further action is required of this council. I don't want to have committed one way or the other in regards to this resolution or an amendment to the resolution. I, I say that with all due respect to everyone involved. I respect our staff, our attorney, our mayor to create scandal and suspicion. By me saying, by me pointing out that there are other complaints that have been filed with other levels of government and that our response has been internal, that doesn't mean that I'm discrediting our report. I'm just simply pointing out what is obvious to 
to many members of the public that you have an entity investigating itself. So with all due respect to everyone, I'm still going to abstain. You could, you could you could amend that 10 times. I'm still going to abstain on every single vote. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments on the amendment? Alder Galvin? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I have a, before I make any comments, a quick question for Alder Johnson. I, I just uh, was trying to put down some notes on why you were abstaining. And, and if you could just, if you could give me some quick, easy, um, so I could just get it down here, your, your reasons for abstaining. Alder Johnson, would you care to respond? Legally, we are not necessarily required to provide a reason, uh, is my understanding. However, I typically do provide that explanation. Now, in this case, um, I suspect my reasoning is very similar to others, and that is we do not want to be put into a compromised position to have to vote against our city, despite the fact that we have unresolved issues that have not yet been, uh, have not yet been um, taken care of. That that's that's the foundation of it. Okay. As I said, I I do not believe anything. Uh, I do not believe any malfeasance has occurred, and I do respect the job uh, that the mayor and the administration and others who have been involved with this process have done. But but like I said before, we have an open complaint that has not been adjudicated. That sends up a big flag. Until that's resolved, I, I don't know how anybody could, quite frankly, take take a vote supporting full confidence when when you have open complaints. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gavin? Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and thank you, Alder Jess. I, I really appreciate it. I wasn't trying to put you on the spot or anything, but um, I mean, what you're saying makes sense to me. So that's that's why I just wanted to make sure I, I, I was understanding what you had said. And, and, and I also agree with you when you said um, what we do here is not going to change the mind of the people that um, if, if we vote in favor of this resolution, I don't think it's gonna change the minds of the people that think this election was operated improperly. Um, but, I, and unfortunately, I also believe that if the uh, Wisconsin Election Commission uh, were to rule that the city of Green Bay did not violate any state statutes, I still think many, if not most, if not all of those same people are still gonna think the city of Green Bay uh, ran the election improperly, should not have taken the money, on and on and on and on as uh, we've been hearing um and and i understand what you're saying too that you know if, if we vote on this one way or the other it puts us in a difficult position um and, and uh, as i said it makes sense to me but it also makes sense to me um that based on the information i have right now i support the resolution and i and i say that with the fact that even though we've done an internal um, review and it's not an external review, we've also had um, entities make basically the same complaints to different courts within the state of Wisconsin, both federally and, and state. And those, uh, those same complaints have been turned down uh, by the courts. Um, the complaint filed by the citizens of Green Bay, while it's their right, this is America and they have the right um, to, to make those complaints. Um, I think those complaints are based on, from what I've been reading, pretty much all the same complaints that have been made all along that have all been thrown out by the courts. And I would not doubt it that even if Green Bay were to prevail in both these cases, there will be people making complaints in the future again. Um, there's just not gonna be any satisfying some individuals. I think the city conducted a, a fair and legal election, and I'm going to support this resolution. The neat thing about America is we have the right to be wrong, and um, in this case, uh, I, I think it's the city that's going to be on the right end of things, and I think it's the people filing these complaints that are going to be on the wrong end of things. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Would uh, Would you like to use the board on the amendment? Might make it easier with the abstention. Yes, please. Your Honor, I got my my uh, point uh, to raise to speak again. Yeah, and it's not working tonight. Alder Scannell. Uh, just quick, I'd like to address the point raised about a vote being putting putting somebody in, in a behind. Um, I myself 
uh, have no problem that if Jupiter should fall out of its orbit and into my lap and, and uh, something, an allegation is brought forth that is, cur that, uh, uh, is rightfully uh, accusing the city of wrongdoing, I have no problem acknowledging that, eating a little crow and saying uh, and changing my vote to support whatever in the future. The future is whatever the future is, and I, I have the ability to vote any which way, no matter how I vote now, abstaining against or for it, to, to, I have that right to change my vote and vote however I want in the future, depending upon future information. Uh, for me, it's important to vote for this now because I believe, as Alderdorf said, now's the time to be standing up for our staff. And there's nothing in this resolution that I do not believe is, is true. There's no allegation out there that's gonna disprove any, of the, uh, any point in this resolution. So uh, I don't see how my vote is going to put me in a bind. And should it come to pass, I have no problem adjusting to new facts and voting accordingly. Thank you. Thanks, Alder, for a second time on the amendment. Alder Burnett. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Real quick, I love you all, I respect you all, but I will say that there are some council members who at the meeting a month and a half ago said, there are any accusation, allegations, where's the complaint? Where, you're all, many of you were ready to vote yes on the resolution a month and a half ago. We decided to delay it. You said, Where, where's the complaint? Where are the issues? What evidence do you have? And then there is a complaint that was filed with the committee that it should go to the Wisconsin Elections Commission, made up of five Green Bay residents with 392 pages of supporting documents. Again, I'm not making a judgment on that complaint, just stating facts. And it was a 33 com page complaint. So despite some of us saying, where's the complaint, where's the complaint? The public heard you, filed a complaint, and now you're still saying, well, forget the complaint, it's as if it doesn't exist. I just, you gotta be consistent. I love you all, respect you all, I just needed that to be said. I'm gonna abstain on the amendment and the final vote, thank you. Thanks, Alder. If there aren't any further comments, let's go to the board on the amendment, which removes the word full from the resolution. Alders, you may vote. Alder Stoyer? It's not. How would you like to be recorded? I'll uh, abstain. Thank you. Looks like seven zero five abstentions. So that amendment is adopted. Entertain a motion. I move to approve the um, the resolution as amended. Second. Okay. Motion has been made to approve the resolution as amended by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Comments on the uh, amended resolution. All right, we will use the board. Alders, you may vote. Mine's not coming up again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote no. How would you like to be recorded, Alder? I'm going to vote no. Thank you. And that is six to one with five abstentions. The resolution passes. Now we are back to <clears throat> item L, report of the Improvement and Services Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Close nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. 
On to protection policy. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any items here to be, that's to, to approve the uh, report of the protection policy committee from April 26, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Number, number one. One, any others? Item one will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Poll is aye. nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item one. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve item one made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Was that Alder Doyer who pulled yeah. this one? Yes. I just wanted to thank um, Alders Gerlach and Stevens, along with um, citizen attorney Rob Miller, myself, for working on this. Uh, it's been an issue that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, we put a lot of thought and effort into it. I think there is a, it's very good. And I think that moving forward, you know, there'll be a little bit of financial setup too when we bid out. So that kind of covers it too. I'd also like to thank attorney Rachel Mays as well for her work on this as well. That's it. Thank you. Thanks all there, all the girl. I just want to say that there's some good news too. We've made some progress since we first started working on this. Um, uh, Mr. Pappy has told us that he's had a conversation that is very encouraging, that looks like we're going to have cooperation. And um, Attorney Mays has, you know, has moved it forward. So I have, I have a lot of confidence that, um, you know, whether we pass a resolution or not, I think we're going to have some improvement on the littering um, situation uh, associated with our official newspaper. So this, I think this is a good one. A positive one. Thanks, all there. All in favor of approving the item, signify by saying aye. 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 Those nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Finance committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. That's to approve the report of the finance committee from April 21st, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Park Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. So approving the report of the Park Committee from April 28, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. You guys have it. That report has been approved. Personnel. Approve. Move to approve. Motion to approve. Made by Alder Scannell, second okay. by Alder Dorf. And that is the report of the Personnel Committee from April 21, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Three and four. Items three and four will be handled separately. Any others? Hearing on others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items th three and four. wishes on item three? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by Alder Johnson. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on this item in particular at the committee level, I had brought up a question. Um, uh, and, and I'll just kind of restate it here because it, as I was reading um, one of our magazines, the municipality, uh, it had commented about how um, uh, a request to delete language in the levy limit law requiring communities to reduce their levy when switching to a fee to pay for certain services like stormwater, fire protection, and garbage collection. And the law department was going to verify uh, or look into whether or not the um, uh, the levy limit law would allow us to continue to fund this additional forestry position uh, out of stormwater fees. So I'm hoping someone from the law department could comment on that. Yes, uh, Director Ellen Becker or Attorney Chavez, feel free to weigh in on that. I have an email. This is Attorney Chavez. So yes, you guys received an email today from Attorney, Attorney Mather explaining the extent of her research, um, essentially, because those fees were already on the uh, 
were already being collected before the fact that the fee went up is is not irrelevant is not relevant at this point. So it would just be if we were establishing a new fee for those for those purposes, like a new um, and and any of the purposes identified as being prohibited are not germane to this to this um, conversation. Okay, so so in the opinion of the law department, then we are in compliance uh, with how that's set up. Correct. Okay, thank you. We do have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of approving that item will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Item four. Motion to approve. And motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I just, at the committee level, the motion that was passed was that this would be a limited term employee for a period of four years, uh, but I didn't see that uh, listed in here. So I just want to be clear that that's the way that it was. That's correct. It will be. Um, if you want to amend it, you can. If not, it will be a limited term for four years. Yeah, I, I think it's probably best that we do amend it so that there is some clarity there. So I would, I would move that we amend uh, the way this is written um to clearly identify that this is an lte position for a period of four years second motion has been made to amend that item by alder johnson seconded by alder scannell any discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed nay the ayes have it the item has been amended motion to approve as amended second, second. Motion to approve as amended, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it, and that item is adopted as amended. On to item or report Q. Motion to Start. approve. Second. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the Public Arts Commission report from April 28th, 2021 by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Hold it. Yes, no? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, any items here to be handled separately? Seeing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, that report has been approved. On to TBMP. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. That's to approve the report of the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission from April 19, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Seven. Seven. Any others? Item seven will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. I have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item seven. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Made by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. The item was pulled by Alder Scannell. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, this is an interesting number of years. A lot of staff has been working on this, and I want to I want to thank the staff for uh, the hard work they've done. Uh, I know Will Peters, Cheryl Ryan Wig, uh, Celestine Jeffries, Dave Hansen, uh, a lot of people. Have but it's really appreciated. It's unfortunate that this isn't going to work out, um, but I'm hoping that uh, uh, this is really a quality of life issue for the neighbors there and that we can uh, go back to the drawing board and really come up with something to, to make this work for everybody. And I know there are some people here who would like to speak on this, uh, just to make sure that everybody is aware that how, how uh, this affects them. So if I make a motion to open the uh, floor, please. Second. Second. Motion has been made to open the floor by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Bill Kipp, if you could unmute yourself at this time and state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Bill Kilp. I'm at 719 North Broadway. Um, before I, I say what I've worked on for the last several days and actually the last several years, um, I just want to thank uh, whatever of my neighbors are still left in this discussion. I, I know a lot of them had planned on logging in and speaking tonight and 
whoever stuck around. I really appreciate it. But I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of the council tonight on this issue. We built our house with NeighborWorks on the corner of Broadway and James in May of 2017 to be part of the downtown development and revitalization. We were aware of truck graph idea how bad it was until we moved in. I soon realized that not all, but most of the trucks on North Broadway are gas tankers servicing the storage farms at the end of Broadway. After talking to several people in the neighborhood, the consensus was that the, the truck traffic had increased considerably since they moved in. I heard that in May of 2016, while we were still building, an executive order was signed declaring a statewide emergency following the temporary shutdown of the West Shore pipeline. This order allowed for an increase in, in trucks transporting the gas instead of being piped. Unfortunately, that turned out to be not so temporary. I started working with the city shortly after we moved in and eventually they did a truck study in 2018 and another one in 2021. Both yielded basically the same results. There are approximately 136 hour period traveling between Alexander and James on North Broadway. On the average, there's one truck every three to five minutes during the day and a few less at night, but it never really stopped 24 7, 365. I'm a reasonable man trying to find a reasonable solution to an issue that affects many besides myself. I realize that I live in an area that is a mix of residential and industrial. Quite frankly, that's one of the things that attracted us to this neighborhood. Oddly enough, my wife and I actually enjoy the view of Graymont from our front porch, particularly at night. We like the way the water tower and the Frigo Bridge blend into the, our view of the north. We want to work with the local businesses and be good neighbors, and we would hope the same from them. We don't hate trucks. We appreciate what they do and the services they provide. We, have, we both have family members and friends who are truckers. This is a quality of life and a public safety issue that affects 32 homes, half of which are multifamily on a stretch between Mather and Alexander on Broadway. Our house was the second of three neighbor work houses on the block. The first was a renovation to an existing house home next door to us to the north. The third across the street from us was built in 2018. Since we moved in, we've noticed an ever increasing amount of people walking past our house. Many stopped to thank us for building our house. One of them told us that they had avoided the and stretch of Broadway on their walks until we built is and up. moved in. This neighborhood, I'm sorry, oh, okay. but I've waited three and a half hours to speak. I've got like uh, 30 seconds left. If you would let me finish, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, feel free to finish up. Oh, thank no you. Thank you. Of course, now I've lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. As I said, our house is the second of three neighbor works houses on our block. The first was a renovation to an existing home next to us. The third across the street from us built in 2018. And I said, many stopped to thank us for building our house. One of them actually told us that they had voided the stretch before we moved in. The neighborhood has grown and improved considerably even in the four years we've lived here. We've noticed an increase in young families moving into our neighborhood, most if not all with young children. The entire point of building, renovating and improving a neighborhood like this is to draw more families and people of all ages to live in the area. But the increased pedestrian traffic, which includes elder walkers and motorized wheel carts, people walking with strollers, dog walking, bikes and skateboards, kids playing in their front yards, they're all, they are, considerable safety issues to consider, including the danger of the oncoming traffics, the pollution they generate, not to man mention the noise factor. I've spoken on several of, of, with several of our neighbor, new neighbors and they all love the neighborhood, but have serious concerns for the safety of their children due to the abundance of trucks on North Broadway. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kilt. We got a question from Alder yeah. Stoyer. Mayor. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Bill, thanks for your testimony. I, I know Alder Scannell and a lot of city staff have worked on this for quite some time. It seems to me that part of it is, 
you know, the designation of Broadway, you know, as a truck route. And I know that they're moving it over to the, to the East. What's your take as far as not allowing that to happen? I, I realize that maybe our hands are tied a little bit because of the type of roads they are, <laughs> state road, if you will. So are, I don't, are you talking about moving it down to McDonald Street? Yeah, just the way that there was some talk about maybe moving it over a little bit. I don't know if that would help or hinder the neighborhood. We, <laughs> we, trucks we, over. Sure, we, we had suggested that as an alternative and mainly because last summer there was road construction that actually um, diverted them that way. My wife was working at NEW at the time, and she said that there was hardly anything, there was no change that she had noticed. So I'm kind of thinking that they probably went the way that they probably should be in the first place, which is the, the between um, the end of North Broadway and going farther north to Atkinson. If they took that route instead of the route that they're taking, they'd actually cut some time off of their route. But you know, why they're not going that way. There's talk about, well, there's three railroad tracks there instead of one. Well, the one that, that it goes across Broadway gets used more. Um, they, but, but back to what you said. Um, sorry, I digress. Um, as far as moving it down there, that seemed like a logical choice. But after reading the memorandum and, and understanding that there's a lot of congestion down there already, and that then piling those trucks on top of that, you know, maybe that's not the best solution, but but doing nothing is not a, is is just not uh, acceptable. Well, I'm, I know they had talked about you know years ago about Ashland Avenue, and that <clears throat> there was a pushback <clears throat> on that as well. I think we're you know we're aware of it. I know Alder Johnson, and you know with on Broadway, there's there's <laughs> there's been talk about this for quite some time, and I I, I appreciate you know what you're going through, and this, and you and Terry, and. You know, it'd be nice to have some kind of a solution for it. Um, I don't think it's been for a lack of effort to try to find a solution, but, um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I hear you. That's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm hoping that there's something that can be done in the future. So I appreciate that. You bet. Alder Gerlach. I'd just like to say, um, sir, thank you so much. That was some of the best testimony I've ever heard from a <laughs> it was based on fact and reason, and I really appreciate that. Well, I, uh, do I you appreciate think you saying are, so. Are there any other citizens here, do you think, that want to speak tonight, or have they all gone to bed? Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some more? Are. There okay. is Terry. And by the way, a... I just want to say the hardest part was paring down a nine minute speech into three minutes. I <laughs> you you understand time. that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Terry, if you could unmute yourself and state your name and address for a record. Let me run down and help her. That's my wife. <laughs> wow, he disappeared. Oh, I, found, I found it. I found it. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. And I can't find my thing that I wrote. It disappeared. I guess what, in a nutshell, to add to what Bill said, thank you, first of all, for listening to me this evening. And I'm sure you're all tired, too. Um, I grew up here in yeah, the yeah, same your name and address? Terry Kilp and 719 North Broadway is my address. And um, Bill is my counterpart. And um, right here on the spot where we built the house with Neighbor Works is the house that I grew up in, uh, where it did sit at one point. I grew up in this neighborhood um, right after my dad got out of the army. And um, I'm the oldest of six children at the at the time they had five. And it was a crazy neighborhood with a bunch of kids. And I learned how to ride my bike and roller skate right out in the middle of Broadway. There were no trucks. Um, we were able to open our windows during the summertime because there were no trucks. Um, now we can't do that because we can't even hear ourselves think much less the stink from the diesel fuel or the diesel exhaust. Um, having been a, a furniture store owner and interior design shop, 
I understand the importance of trucks. I have family members who are truck drivers. I totally get that. But my store was not in the middle of a residential neighborhood. And um, it just doesn't make any sense when we have these trucks coming up and down, back and forth, 24-7, 365 days a year, even on Christmas, and you can't sit on the front porch and have a conversation. Not to mention the fact that there are no children playing out here anymore because it's just too dangerous. And I work at the new um, shelter, and I expect to see trucks there because that's just where they go. That's where they always were. When I lived here as a child, we were to stay away from Mather. Broadway was not an issue. The one That's where all the trucks were. And the heavy traffic, that's just the way it always was. But now it's different. And, um, you know, we did build here to have this home to be part of this revitalization and revitalization to me is to restore something and breathe new life back into a neighborhood that was probably ignored and and run down and and let to kind of live on its own for several years and the whole idea of the revitalization of the broadway district is to breathe new life into it so we wanted to be a part of that and i'm very proud of the fact that I'm kind of right back where I started in the 1960s. So um, it's very sad to me to think that what used to be here when I was a child is no longer. And I thought that by breathing new life into it and having these new homes and having this diverse amount of young people, old people, people of diff different ethnic backgrounds would be definitely where I want to live. And now. I can't even sit on my front porch. So that's not everything that I wanted to say, but in a nutshell, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak on this item? Ebony, if you could unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Hello, Ebony Harvey, 720 North Broadway. So um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a Green Bay transplant. And one of the things that I was really wanting to do when I moved here was buy a home. Um, I saw that the cost of living in Green Bay, where it was in price point, I was looking at real estate and I was just at the stage in my life where I wanted to try to buy my first home. I um, found out about the work of NeighborWorks through some of their signs in the yards, and I worked with them, and I was able to buy my first home last year at the 720 um, Broadway home that they built when they tore down a home that was here, and they, and they built this one up or some, something like that. Um, so I, I'm really excited to be a, a brand new homeowner. I previously was living um, just in the area of downtown. I wanted to remain in downtown. I love the area. I love what was going on. You could see me walking around Broadway. You could see me going to the events um, at the at Light Park. You would see me on Washington Street, um, always just kind of walking around. That's my thing. And I really liked what I felt like. I always told people, because people would say, why would you move to Green Bay, <laughs> right? I've lived in Boston. I've lived in you know Charlotte and, and these larger cities. And um, I tell people, well, it's kind of where fate brought me, but there's a lot of exciting things happening in Green Bay. And so I'm as excited to be a part of that, especially in a neighborhood revitalization. One of the reasons I always wanted to buy a home was where I wanted to have a feeling of community. And so I was really looking forward to that. And I am looking forward to that. Um, and so in the, in the last year of being in the home, I have noticed um, the significant truck traffic. And while um, a couple of ways that I think it affects me and affects the community is um, a lot of times when they're driving straight down Broadway, they're really going um, beyond the speed limit. And I think that's a bigger concern because the couple times I have seen some children playing on the corner, I think it's a newer family because I've never seen these children before. Um, you know, once I saw their ball roll into the street, now there were no trucks coming at the time, but I know that they were kind of, uh, they were like looking, deciding whether they would cross the street or not because of just the traffic. And I actually got the ball for them, but there's not often trap kids playing as, as Terry mentioned, because I think of the traffic issue. And um, so not only the trucks, but then the speed that they may come through. 
Um, and just in terms of like home, um, Bill and Terry mentioned that there was truck traffic. I didn't know what it meant or what it would look like. It shakes the home. Um, I can always tell so, to some extent I wake up to it or I, I'll even wake up in the middle of the night sometimes with uh, because the home is shaking because a truck is coming through. Maybe it depends on the weight. Maybe it depends on the speed. Maybe it depends on both. And so those are just some of the concerns that I would say I would definitely, I know um, that Alderman Scandal has been looking into it for us and that there has been data collected. Um, I, I believe that Clerk Jeffries also helped gather some data. And so I would hope that that data could be used to really find a solution that worked. Because I mean, what I wouldn't want is I wouldn't want things moved and while Broadway is better for it, maybe some other residential area is not better for it. But if there are some service roads or some lesser used roads or just some way that traffic could be diverted in a way that didn't impact as many or certain of the community, um, I would love for the council to look into that. Thank you. If there is anyone else to speak on this item, if you would unmute yourselves. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Tony Spencer. I live at 404 James Street in Green Bay. Um, I am a neighbor of Bill and Jerry and, and others that have spoken tonight. I've lived here for just over a year, and one of the first things I noticed, honestly, was the noise. And given that I, uh, the job I had when I first moved here required me to be up early in the mornings, as the trucks go by at all hours, the noise was at times very disruptive to my sleep and sometimes disruptive to my ability to function. Not only that, I know uh, between my neighbor and um, our the neighbors across the alley, there are little kids, some of which are special needs, that do run around the neighborhood. And as they're children, they run freely. And as has already been said, the tr not only are the trucks loud, but they seem to come down Broadway, even this residential area, at speeds unconcerned to the, just to the respect of the community. Um, not only, as, as others have said, I, I, I'm, I like to read. And during the outside, during the uh, more than months, I do find it difficult to sit outside and try to enjoy a nice book with all the traffic. And uh, and also as I've gotten closer to my neighbors, I have seen, um, some, I have been um, concerned about the safety of the children um, in, uh, in case um, anyone should run into the street. That and my, uh, myself and so, several of my neighbors also seem to rely on bicycles as their primary means of transportation. And as is legally proper, bicycles share the road with regular traffic. And again, with um, the seemingly uh, the heavy flow of traffic and their seeming uh, disregard for the respect of the residential neighborhood they are coming through, biking has become also dangerous along certain stretches of its road. Um, it, it was not something I expected when I moved in, but it has been a consistent problem this entire time and was quite a surprise. And I know that um, Bill has been very active in trying to bring more attention to this. And I know that all of my close personal neighbors would feel far safer if something could be done to address this. Thank you. If there is anyone else who'd like to speak on this item, if you can unmute yourself at this time. Entertain a motion. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach <clears throat> to close the floor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the floor is closed. Thanks to all the residents for coming forward to, to testify on this issue. Uh, any further comments or questions from council here? Uh, like Alder, wrap it up, Your Honor. Yeah, Alder Johnson and then Alder Scannell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it, real quickly, too, just wanted to thank Bill and Terry, Tony, um, for obviously testifying. And specifically, I want to thank Ebony for choosing Green Bay. Um, uh, to your point, that's uh, a heck of a decision. And, and so we appreciate that. Um, I, I wanted to, because Alder Story had alluded to this, I wanted to just maybe offer up a point of information for those that may be confused um, about this. But the, the truck route um, that runs through the Broadway corridor is different 
than the one that we're talking about here in the northern end. While they connect and they're adjacent, uh, this is different. This is different traffic. So I think that just should be widely understood by council. Um, and you know, when I looked at uh, the report for this, of course, I think. Um, there was the solution that had been recommended by by Mr. Kilp, um, and of course the uh, traffic engineer had indicated, "Hey, here's here's why this perhaps wouldn't work." I think what I would love to perhaps see from staff, and maybe this will be embedded in Alder Scandal's motion, which I presume he's going to make. I'd, I'd love to see if we can be more solution forward and and say, "Hey, we recognize that this solution that you offered maybe doesn't work, but let us let us tinker with this as engineers and see if we can come up with something that will." So that, that would just be something I would like to see. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Yes, I'm going to be putting in a couple of communications. I think this can be, this uh, particular item can be put to bed. We can receive and place on file. But I will be, I want to talk to the mayor's office about a few things and perhaps some of our state reps about some things and uh, a couple of communications for staff. So uh, I really appreciate everybody coming forward. And uh, it's back to the drawing board, but I'm hoping everybody uh, you know, we'll keep our nose to the grindstone. We, we just got, I think there's a solution out there. I really do, but it's been a, <laughs> it's been a wily one, but we'll keep at it. And uh, I thank everybody for, for coming and waiting so long and, and, and speaking. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach? I'll be very brief, but I just want to say, I think this is very exciting. And this is exactly why I want to get the election because this is the kind of work that I'd like us to be doing. I'm, I'm really excited that we have a dilemma here and that staff's been working on it and hasn't been able to solve it because it has to be solved. It does have to be solved. This is the work that I'm excited about doing with the council. Um, I, I, I read what the staff had to say. They got a good point. You know, they got a lot of good points, but I'm, I'm excited to move forward and find a solution to this. So thanks a lot for this, folks. And, and I'm going to put in that communication in the email. I'm not going to do it at the end of the council meeting. Just thanks, for, thanks for the reminder, Alder. So with, uh, with no further comments, uh, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that item is approved. On to sustainability. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Anything here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the remainder of that, re or the, the report rather, um, will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to ordinance's first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. The motion has been made to suspend the rules and take up both ordinances with one roll call vote. It's made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Uh, motion to advance. Advance. I'm sorry. Motion to advance. Motion Second. to advance made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed oh, nay. We have to vote. We have to no. use no. the board. No? No. Oh. The ayes have it. And my mistake. Those, those items are advanced to a second reading. Uh, petitions and communications. M Mayor, can I get a quick point of order on something? Yeah. Just driving me crazy, and I, I don't want to be a negative guy or be that guy to bring it up, but on the resolution on the election, the vote was six to one with five ex extensions. Attorney Chavez, was there needing to be seven votes to pass that with 12 members present? Give me a minute, I need to look at the um, language of our ordinance. Uh, it's, I didn't mean to bring that up now, Mayor. I didn't know when. No, that's fine. Up. We can. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll move on to petitions and communications. And I do have for... one. I do have one, and it's actually a question that Attorney Chavez will about have to answer. So I, I can wait until the others give their. And, and Mayor, I I could actually provide an answer to that, and Attorney Chavez could certainly verify it. But as long as you have a majority present for quorum, then you just need a majority vote to pass. So it does follow Robert's rules of order. It does pass. 
what I'm verifying is that we don't just need a majority present uh, or that we just need a majority present, not a majority of the council. So that's, that's what I'm verifying. Okay, so petitions and communications. Nobody? I do have one. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's, I, I think it would go to traffic or prote perhaps protection of policy, but I've been getting some complaints about speeding again, and I have a person that would like to have a, a city discuss resolving speeding issues throughout the city. So I don't know if that would be appropriate for traffic commission or protection and policy. I know we have a new acting police chief, so I don't want to you know, be a pain at this moment, but it's uh, needing to be addressed. It would be traffic. <laughs> traffic. So motion, uh, communication then to the traffic commission to discuss spe uh, speeding violations in the city of Green Bay. With possible act. Any others? Alder Gerlach. I just want to make a quick observation because I see that Mike Ronick is still with us and has been here all these hours. And have you all noticed that with our new system that now when we vote, we actually get to see what we're voting for? Yes. It actually says what we're voting for now. So thank you for the new system. Great point. All right, I'll entertain a motion to refer. Motion to refer. Second. Motion to refer the communications made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that um, communication has been referred. Uh, now we wait for Attorney Chavez. No pressure. <laughs> right. Throw some good puns out there, Randy. I think I'm too addle brain. <laughs> Alder Brunette, I would like to join you in that speeding issue. I would like to work together with you on that. I have an idea for it. Thank you. Another thing too, we didn't uh, welcome the interim chief to his first meeting tonight. Welcome chief. <laughs> welcome. Captain Rungi still Welcome, awake. Chief Rungi. Is, he, is he still here? Yeah, <laughs> I'm still here. Look at him. Yep. Thank you. Good to have him. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. He's in uniform again. He gets two retirement cakes now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll run into you after I retire again at the grocery store, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, that was a while ago. Yeah, it was. I am not seeing anything that requires just the majority of those voting or of those present. Um, and as a result, I, I would opine that it is uh, it was properly voted upon and passed. Thanks, Attorney Chavez. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those navy eyes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Take care. <clears throat> Good to see everybody. You didn't know.